My marriage is falling apart because of my changed lifestyle. I am a 37-year-old woman. I have been married to my husband, 40 male, for 10 years. We have two kids together, 7 male and 4 female. I never had any issues in my marriage before. After my son was born, I went into a deep depression. My life was not in the right track anyways. I was stuck in a dead-end, low-paying job. I was handling my boy alone because my husband has to work overtime to feed us. When my daughter came, I made a decision to change myself. I used to drink a lot, and now I'm sober. I haven't touched alcohol in five years. I have changed my diet and bad food habits. I go to the gym and do yoga every morning. My sleep has improved. My mood has improved drastically with just some changes. I do not get irritated easily or become helpless. I have also updated my resume and looked for a job that suits me. I make a decent amount of money now. I get compliments from people around me telling me that I look great. I have lost a ton of weight too. I thought my husband would be happy, but he's not. He dislikes that I get compliments from people or when people compliment me in front of him. I didn't see it as a big issue. He used to joke about how people assume he is Adam Sandler who got the hot chick. I used to brush it off as a joke, and then I discovered that he was cheating on me with a coffee shop waitress. I don't think her job title matters, but that girl doesn't seem nice to me. I have looked through some of the chats of her and my husband, and she called me an old hag, trying to fit in with the young. She lives with her parents and is a high school dropout. She is only 22 years old. I am devastated. I thought my husband would be happy. Our sex life is better than ever. This affair has been going on for seven months. Despite me working more hours now, I still do all of my wifely duties. I cook for him, make him his lunch for the office, I initiate sex and intimacy, and now here I am getting a divorce from him. When I confronted him about the affair, he told me being with me is always overbearing. He feels invisible because most people give me attention, and somehow it's my fault. I was obsessed with myself rather than noticing how this is making him feel. He feels small because he has been stuck in the same place as five years ago. I don't get it. I never pushed him to follow my lead. I always told him that I loved him no matter what. Why is this happening? I don't want my kids to grow up in a broken family, but I cannot live with him after what he has said and done. I know he is being insecure, but he didn't have to hurt me like this. I know as a single mum it is tough to survive. People have warned me that my husband could act differently towards me, and they were right. I wish it didn't end like this. In the comments, my name could be Sam says, This is happening because he knows that you are too good for him. He's making himself feel better by going for a young person earning not great money so he can feel like he's better than her, which is obviously what he used to feel about you until you very loudly proved him wrong. OP replies, Kinda ironic, isn't it? Marriage is supposed to be for better or for worse. He stayed with me at my worst, but left me at my best. And you're going to be great without him. He'll hate you doing well, but cheating is a deal breaker. I absolutely love the work you've done on yourself. Not drinking and physical health will help your mental health through this. It's a new beginning for you and the kids. OP says, I wish. Ever since the divorce proceedings started, my mental health has been in shambles. I was so close to drinking again. Mysterious Ad says, Listen, I say this as an addict. You cannot do that. You are so strong and have overcome so much. You need a therapist ASAP and maybe start going to meetings. Divorce is hard. People change. You grew and your husband regressed. You are so close to a life of light and fulfillment, which your husband is unwilling and unable to create. You will get through this one day at a time, like your sobriety. Every day will get easier, and you will continue to get stronger. You haven't failed, and quite the opposite, as you have just grown to be a better version of yourself. That's the goal, isn't it? The fact that your husband has a victim mindset has nothing to do with you. You are killing it, and I implore you to keep going. You've got this. OK Channel 1682 says, As a child of divorce, trust me, it's better to grow up with two separate parents than having your parents locked in daily battle. Staying together for the kids is a bullshit philosophy that needs to go in the trash. Clexington47 says, You don't think it's normal to think love is abuse? 
that physical violence is passion, that pushing people away is protecting them, that their needs matter but yours don't, that waking up in a house full of screaming is the normative, that separations aren't real so your partner leaving is abandonment, that putting on a face that everything is perfect at family events when one of you is abusing the other, that expecting kids to be able to think like adults because you were parentified? <sighs> Sarcasm. That's the reality of children who grow up with parents who needed to get divorced but stayed together for the kids. Listen to the post above, it is fact. Lauren Avici says, I am so sorry he is doing this to you and your family. It's really easy to beat the F out of everyone around you emotionally when you can't bring yourself to face your own bullshit. He feels some type of way for not keeping up with you for the last five years, so he cheats and talks shit because changing is hard work, as you know, and facing that fact that you are too lazy to change is even harder. OP says, Yes, it wasn't an easy journey for me. I wanted to quit in the middle because I was seeing no progress whatsoever. Maybe I should have asked him to go work out with me or encouraged him to leave his job too. Since he was not working overtime, I would have helped him. During my job search, I met a few people online that helped me build a really good resume. I would have done the same for him. I just don't know why he feels like this, like he's falling behind. I tried my best to communicate, but failed. And perplexed Poppy replies to that, You didn't fail. You can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. And yeah, honestly, I'll just echo what some of these comments have said. I do think it is in everyone's best interest here to divorce. It is going to be okay. It is better for the kids to grow up with two separate parents that can co-parent amicably than it is to grow up in a you know, family where the parents hate each other. Where you're not shown real examples of love. You're not shown a good bond between the two people that are supposed to be keeping things together in the household. It's, it's very counterproductive when those two people are actively tearing each other's lives apart and then, you know, they keep staying together because uh, it's for your stability, but your world is not stable, so what's going on? And, oh, you're a kid, so you can't really talk about these things because you don't understand the world. But even though as a kid you can obviously see that something is wrong and you want things to change, but because you're a kid, uh, you're not allowed to say anything. I don't know, I just very much applaud OP for leaving him because Jesus Christ, what a messy situation. And I know because I've seen and read and heard from people that have been cheated on in instances like this and they still don't leave their partner because they want to stay with them for the kids and I just don't understand that line of thinking. It hurts me deep inside to think of these situations. Anyway guys, what is your take on this situation thus far and what do you think is going to happen in the update? Update. Hello guys. I want to thank all those people who have supported me and were kind to me. I know people have PM'd me to know how I was doing. I'm doing fine. Yes, there is still pain, but things are moving smoothly. I did get my son and daughter to therapy. My son knows why we are divorcing. He gets angry sometimes and throws a fit. My daughter is too young to understand anything. I just want to know how I can handle this. How can I make my son see that none of this is his fault, but his father's? I do not want to keep anything a secret from my kids, because I believe the relationship between a couple affects the kids too. I do want him to have a good relationship with his dad, but I do not want him to take a bad lesson from it. The other day I was watching the movie Family That Prays. I know this is silly, but I had this fear inside me that if my son blames me for the divorce like Andrea blamed her mother because her father left, what if he just turns out to be just like his own father? I cannot control everything that goes on inside his head. I try my best to be there for my son, but the constant fear of losing him is still there. My father came to visit me. He lives in a different city. He knows half truth. After knowing the full truth, he was very angry. When my ex-husband came to visit our kids, my dad and him got into a huge fight. My dad slapped him. My dad used to be in the army, so my ex-husband is terrified of him. He threatened to call the police, but my dad shouted, I'm not afraid of a cockroach like you. I told my dad not to make things more complicated than they already are. I'm trying my best to keep my daily routine. Sleeping has been tough, but I do not want to depend on pills. On the bright side, I have a lot of free time in my hands. I realized that half of my chores have been reduced. I know my kids are messy, but there is a huge relief. I do not have to clean crumbs off the table or have rings of water droplets on my coffee table, which annoys me a lot. 
things and stuff stay in its place. I started to notice that my husband was the one who made half the mess and I was the one who cleaned it. Last week, I went to the theater with my son and daughter to watch Barbie. We were accompanied by my friend who was also a single mom of two. I felt good wearing the replica of the cowboy costume that Margot Robbie wore, which was my friend's idea. We did have a lot of fun. I'm still trying my best to stay afloat and I'm not thinking about dating. I do not have the urge to date at the moment. I did get hit on in a few places, but nothing exciting. I'll see you guys later. In the comments, Fishy Fish says, All I can think of is that line at the end of Crazy Rich Asians. It's not my job to make you feel like a man. I can't make you something you're not. Talk about a guy with self-esteem issues. Jeesh. I call this toxic insecurity, when someone makes their insecurity someone else's problem to solve. Stinstin555 says, Yep, she handled it much better than I would have. I have two moods, chill versus nuclear. I would have, one, slapped a stamp on his forehead and written return to sender with a sharpie while he was asleep, two, driven over to her parents' house to let them know that my soon-to-be ex would be showing up later and they needed to get a new key made since their daughter was screwing a married man, three, hand-delivered a suitcase with his clothes to his place of business and told the staff I left it with that he's moving in with his 21-year-old affair partner, and four, sent a nicely wrapped package containing a glitter bomb to his side chick at work with a note that says, congrats, he's yours. Ah, <sighs> play stupid games. The rest for the wicked replies to that. Number three is what my old manager did when her husband was screwing a coworker. Just some heavily pregnant petite lady, she's like five foot two on a good day, hauling trash bags of clothing into his office building and throwing them into his AP's cubicle while every nosy person watched. Damn, she and I must be related. The rest for the wicked also says, the best part is that the affair partner didn't want his sorry ass, so I have this wonderful mental image of him hauling his garbage bag clothes to some shitty extended stay motel. Bonus, the house was technically hers, that she owned before they were married, and even though we live in a province that considers community and marital property, it was held under a family trust, making them essentially tenants of the trust, so he couldn't touch it in their divorce. Science is my god says, It's your fault I cheated, it's your fault I felt small, and it's your fault my life sucks. Like, huh? Or just a thought, do better? Also, that note about half the chores says a lot about him as a husband before he got jealous. And Todd Fred says, I went to nursing school with a girl who had a husband like this. The closer she came to graduating, the more he begged her to quit because he was so afraid that she would leave him. A couple of weeks before graduation, he gave her an ultimatum, quit or divorce, and she chose divorce. She's a physician assistant now. I, female 20, have no idea how to handle my fiancé's, male 21, best friend, male 23, kissing me. What can I do? I am engaged to the most wonderful man, who I'll call Scott, not his real name. This might be a long one, so bear with me please. Yesterday, Scott's best friend and chosen brother Jackson kissed me on the lips. For a brief moment, I didn't react. I just sat there and let him before I pushed him off of me. Mind you, I'm 4 foot 9 and only 95 pounds. He's nearly 6 foot 3 and weighs 250 pounds, so pushing him off wasn't easy. Right after pushing him off, he got back on top, grabbing my chest and my throat while kissing me again. I was effing terrified, but he finally got off once I started crying. He is also the only person other than my fiance who knows that I'm an assault victim. Jackson explained that he got the go-ahead from his wife and my fiancé, but begged me not to tell anyone as he was afraid that his wife, female 18, would leave him, and he would lose a best friend. I don't want anyone to lose each other, as recently Scott has lost his bio dad, uncle and aunt, as well as our friend group. I don't think he can mentally handle losing Jackson. Jackson swears it'll never happen again and that he is beyond sorry, but that I simply can't tell anyone. I used to consider Jackson my brother as well, but I have no idea how to handle this. I want to tell Scott, I want to tell him so maybe he can talk to him privately, but Jackson says if anyone finds out, he won't be around for Scott anymore. I'm so conflicted on how to handle this. 
I know it's the morally right thing to tell Scott, but what if that does more damage than good? In the comments, Shooting Star Airplane says, This man assaulted you. You pushed him off, which is a very clear no. He then got on top of you and grabbed at your chest and throat. This time he stopped because you cried, but next time he may not. He should lose his wife. He should lose his friend. He should never be near you again. These are the consequences of his own actions. He deserves far worse. Tell your fiancé, not because you're telling on Jackson, but because you deserve to have someone to be there for you while you go through this. I am so sorry this happened to you. And please call the police and report this. Plain and simple, this is sexual assault. He tried to choke you and grabbed your breast. He doesn't want you to say anything because he doesn't want anyone else to know. Check for any bruises and take photos for evidence. Tell your boyfriend and his girlfriend that guy is a predator and everyone you know should be told what he tried to do. He needs to be stopped now before he has a chance to really hurt someone. I would not be surprised if you find out there are others that he has done this to. NYC Hockey 14 says, You need to tell everyone involved. He is a predator and took advantage of you. No, his wife didn't approve. No, Scott didn't approve either. And even if, a big effing if, they did, you did not. You did not consent to anything and were assaulted. North Investigator 395 says, Get rid of this man immediately. You need to get over your fears and expose him. He should not be around anyone close to you and definitely doesn't deserve a wife, an 18-year-old wife at that. From this one encounter alone, he seems like a predator, immature, lacks self-control, and manipulative. You need to do something about this ASAP. Dexter says, He is lying about getting consent from anyone about this. Tell everyone involved what this creep did. His next step will be to deny that this happened at all. Jackson is the one at fault here, not you. It is not your responsibility to carry this horrible burden to preserve relationships for this scumbag. Scott should not want to be friends with Jackson after he hears this. If he does, then I'd plead with you not to marry this man. It's funny how he thinks that his wife and friend are who we need to give him permission rather than the OP. Go scorched earth on this FR. And just let me echo the sentiment of everyone else here, OP. Absolutely, he did not get your consent to do what he did. That is assault. What kind of justification is that? How does anyone rationalize that, oh, I asked uh, your boyfriend for permission and my wife for permission, therefore I can do whatever I want to you? Also, the fact that he knows that you're a victim of this already just makes it even worse. He knows that you're vulnerable and that this will trigger you and that th this will make things worse. This kind of scum deserves to be in jail for actions like this. There, there's nothing to say besides that. Lock him up and throw away the key. Update. I posted this after a very unsettling situation happened and a few people asked for an update and I wanted to clarify some things. Clarity first. 1. I don't think that many people saw my comment, but I am almost entirely mute. I communicate through ASL and written text. 2. Yes, this is military. A few people pointed out that it seems like a military-related situation, and it is. Both my fiancé and Jackson are in the army. 3. I am aware that we are young. I know it's not the smartest idea to be making such large commitments at a young age, but I know I love Scott. As for Jackson and his wife, there is no excusing that age gap. But they grew up together, started dating when she was around 16, married three months after she turned 18. As for the update, I told Scott and Jackson's wife. I'm not sure how she handled it because both Scott and I were blocked after telling her. Scott did drop Jackson and is incredibly angry as he never agreed to it. We took photos of the bruising around my neck but did report this, not only to his higher-ups but also local police as I don't live on base. Scott has been nothing but supportive of me and he let me have my time to cry and vent. If no one here has seen an ASL user venting, it does look like someone translating Rap God into ASL. I wanted to thank everyone for the support and tough love and brutal honesty. I admit I was downplaying what happened in my head as I couldn't convince myself it was actually assault. If you're reading this and in the same situation that I was in, tell someone, please. You would be surprised by how many people actually do love you and support you and want you to heal. 
In the comments, Nalium says, I'm proud of you for speaking out, smiley face. Florida Eng says, You should be very proud of yourself and your husband. We all know this was tough, but realize by doing this, you are accomplishing many things. You are showing yourself and others that you value yourself and believe you deserve to be treated well and you will not accept any mistreatment. You know your husband also values you and will work to protect you. Realize by reporting this, you definitely saved yourself from future attacks by this predator and probably saved other women from being attacked by this predator in the future. If he had been able to do this with no consequences to himself, he would have kept doing it. You know now that you were stronger than you thought you were. All of us that replied to your original post are proud of you. You were subjected to a horrible event and you fought back and showed tremendous courage to tell your husband and the police what happened. I'm proud of you, OP. Please get medical attention for your injuries. A lot of people don't know that you can die after being strangled days later because the damage is not obvious and you can have internal injuries. Please get checked out. Plus, it'll be good for evidentiary purposes if she ever needs them. Have them document everything, including any mental health treatment. Many doctors have on-site mental health professionals who can do brief on-site crisis counseling. It is way too disturbing that people were like, sounds like the military, and they were actually correct. When behaviors are that common, you really have to rethink some shit. Much Prefer Pet says, I literally do not know a single woman who was in the military who was not sexually assaulted at least once. And they are pretty much all young kids with no real experience in life who get married as fast as possible and start popping out babies because all they can see is how much more money they get for quarters instead of living in the barracks. It's kind of like if someone starts talking about their abusive, controlling boyfriend they're terrified to try to escape from and it comes out that the guy is a cop. Everyone is instantly like, oh yeah, that explains everything. Wow, what a horrifying way to end this story. I don't feel any better after hearing that. I'm, I'm sorry if you came here to feel better, guys, but that that was really depressing. And I am very much glad that OP's partner took her side and didn't take his side here. I know it's silly to say that, but it does happen. I hope the predator has the day and the life that he deserves. I do hope that this is followed up on and his life is taken apart as it is now so that he learns his lesson for what he's done. I wish they weren't blocked, and I really wish we could know the outcome for that predator in this instance. I do hope that his wife leaves him, and I hope he gets kicked to the streets. But, you know, karma isn't always that swift, unfortunately. Our next post is by user CheetahsSuck12, titled, I saw my husband and sister naked in my kitchen. I can't move. If I move, it becomes real, and I have to accept what I saw and think of what's next. I came home from work early and saw my sister's car thinking maybe she was dropping off some food from her job, but no. I walk in and see my husband and sister naked in my kitchen, the kitchen that I paid for. As soon as I registered what I saw, I got into my car and left. I kept driving, just driving, driving, driving until I found the hotel that I'm at now. I don't want to believe it. I don't know what to do. My sister, my only family and my best friend, the one who's supposed to be there for me and support me. My husband, my person, my other half, the one who's supposed to love and respect me. The two most important people in my life have ruined everything. I've blocked them both on my phone. I don't want to hear any of the bullshit excuses they'll come up with. I don't want to confront this. I want to go back to this morning when everything was fine. In the comments, XM Sit says, Unblock them and just let their calls go to voicemail. Turn the ringer off for each of them in your contacts. That way you can get recorded proof of their apologies and excuses via voicemail. You may need that type of proof for your divorce. This is good advice. I hope OP sees this. I wouldn't have thought of that. Goodness, my heart breaks for the OP. This is devastating. Sammy G 21 says, Just from a banking standpoint, I work at a bank, file legal documents intending to separate, open an individual bank account, start your paychecks going there after you've filed your separation papers. I don't know what state you're in, whether it's a community proper state or not, but keep everything as clear-cut as possible so there won't be issues down the road. 
deal with them with your head held as high as you can, don't take their shit, and cry when no one is watching. In front of them, be the badass that you are. They are the lowest of the low and they will prey on your perceived weaknesses. Best of luck, OP. You need to be in every cheating sub. This is excellent advice and something I don't think a lot of people know about. Update. Sorry for not replying to comments and not updating. Things have been hectic. I didn't think that I needed to explicitly say this, but by naked, I meant that they were butt naked and screwing in the kitchen. I admit mentioning that I paid for the kitchen was odd and kind of funny, but anyone that knows me knows that my kitchen is my pride and joy. So yes, when I saw my sister and husband screwing in my kitchen, it stuck with me. And yes, they did see me. When I got to the hotel, I cried for a few hours, and then I just wanted to tell someone, anyone. The two people I would talk to when something happened in my life were the two that I needed to talk about, and it was 11-something in the evening, so I wasn't going to disrupt my friends' evenings and burden them. So instead, I came to Reddit thinking that not many would see it. The response I received was overwhelming. I want to say thank you to everyone that sent kind words and advice. Thank you so much for all the virtual hugs. I only commented once, that is because I had so much to think about and do. I appreciate all the love and support. There was so much amazing advice in the comments. Although a lot of it was American based, I still appreciate it, but one thing I did see was a lot to unblock them and keep the texts and calls as evidence so I did do that. After posting and another good cry, I knew that I had to get my shit together. I didn't have my sister or any family to help, so I had to do it myself. I started researching what my next steps were. In the morning, my friend called me saying that my sister contacted her wondering if I had been in contact with her. I told her what happened, and she kindly offered her spare room and her day off work to help me sort stuff out. I called in sick at my job, and my friend helped me get things done. I got in contact with my friend who works at a bank, and she helped me start sorting my financials. My friend also found me a lawyer to consult with. After my phone consultation with the lawyer, I was so overwhelmed. I now know why so many women don't divorce their cheating husbands. It is such a lengthy, expensive, and emotionally draining process. I, fortunately, make a stable income and can support myself, and we, fortunately, don't have kids. I have to remember that things aren't going to happen in one day. It will all take time. As for the house, unfortunately, his parents did buy it for us, and to be honest, after what I saw, I don't want it. I will try to get reimbursed for my beloved kitchen, otherwise, it can burn for all I care. This has been super draining, but I knew I had to talk to them. I already knew that there was no coming back for my husband, and when I checked his messages, they were exactly what I thought they would say. I'm sorry, it's not what it looks like, we didn't mean for it to happen, please come home, I love you, blah blah blah, just absolute bullshit. A small part of me thought that maybe I could find it in me to forgive my sister, as we only have each other, but after I opened her messages, all hope was lost. She used the same excuses we heard our father use when he cheated on our mother and beat us. She said the same things our mother would say when she would excuse our dad's behavior and also beat us. I spoke to her this morning and asked her to tell me straight up who, what, where, when, and why. She told me that back in July when I went on a girl's trip, she was at our house and joked to my husband that I would cheat on him on the girl's trip because that's what always happens. He said nah, and they joked about it, but she said that he could get even with me and they ended up doing it once. One time led to two, to three, then to whenever they could do it. There was never any evidence or signs or anything that I was going to, or even thinking, of cheating. I told her that we were done, and there is nothing that she could do to bring us back together. I later received a call from an unknown number. It was my mother, who I haven't spoken to in seven years. Turns out my sister has been in contact with her and told her what had happened, and my piece of crap mother, the same woman who beat me for breathing wrong, had the audacity to say that this is what I get for taking her daughters away from her. It hurts so much. I know things are going to get messier, and this is going to be a long few years. I've now lost all of my blood relations. I need to get all my shit and find a new place. I want to show them that I can and I will thrive without them. 
Again, thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all the love and advice. All the people in the comments that could relate to me, I'm so sorry. In the comments, Deleted says, I'm very proud of you for taking charge and for standing up for yourself. I know it's very hard, but you got this. You will get through this. OP replies, Thank you for your kind words. It's pretty hard losing the only family I had, but I'm trying so hard to stay optimistic. Betrayal like this is effing devastating. It will be long and hard and draining, but I will make it. Your sister basically instigated the whole thing, and you would best believe this was very intentional on her part. She waited until you were gone, and then went round to your husband and told him that you would cheat on him, and he was stupid enough to go along with it. I'm not condoning your husband at all. He is definitely trash, but your sister is definitely the worst here. You sound like you have great friends around you, and I hope that you can get in for some therapy as well, as this level of betrayal is huge and devastating. Make sure you tell everyone exactly what happened, and shame the both of them. No one will think worse of you. They will see them for the disgusting assholes they both are. And OP replies, Thank you for your comment. It's a hard pill to swallow, but yes, she did instigate the whole thing. Why? I don't know, and my ex-husband is very stupid and pathetic to go along with it. Sorry, but your husband didn't take much convincing, did he? He's trash. I have never and will never understand why people cheat. Best of luck, and I'm proud of you. Exactly. Everyone's saying that her sister is worse, as if her ex-husband isn't the one who broke their vows. He is just as bad as the sister. OP trusted them both, and they both backstabbed her. And now, onto the final update. I actually forgot about this account until recently, and when I logged back in, I saw so many people still commenting, messaging me, and checking up on me. To those people, thank you for your kindness. Since so many still ask for an update, and I've already shared such a big part of my life, I may as well give a small update. Back in October, my life was in chaos, but I was determined to soldier through it and show them that I can make it without them and succeed. I had to meet with my ex to talk about the house, and he kinda gave up, and we decided to sell the house. I was reimbursed for my beloved kitchen. At first, my sister would show up at my job and my friend's house, but once I told her that I would get the police involved, she stopped. I haven't seen her since February. I did hear from my pathetic excuse of a mother again, but that was also shut down, and I've not heard from her since the end of last year. I'm from New Zealand, so my ex and I have to be living separately for two years before we can divorce. Although I want nothing to do with him, I'm not too fussed. One year is almost done. I started therapy, which has been healing. I wish I had gone earlier. I have moved into my apartment, and I was promoted at work. I have also gone on two girl trips and had some extra fun these times as I was a single woman, and I've also just started seeing someone. He has been very kind. Thank you all again for your kindness. I hope this is the update that you are waiting for. In the comments, Additional Way 1346 says, I'm glad you updated. You are happier, never introduced the man to the family, wouldn't put it past your sister to repeat her behavior. Cutting the toxic people in your life brings so much mental freedom. Living a happy single life after divorce is a kindness to yourself. Best update so far. Quote, it's not what it looks like. This line is hilarious to me. They were caught naked and having sex. What else could it possibly be? Did the husband trip, accidentally rip off all their clothes, land with his penis in her vagina, and the thrusting was him just trying to get up? Jasper Jamboree says... A former colleague was going through a nasty divorce after finding her husband cheating on her like OP. She was religious, and I wasn't super close with her, but she needed to vent to someone, and most of her friends were mutual friends with her ex through the church, and would gossip about her every chance they got since divorce was such a huge controversy in their religion. She wanted to vent to me because I was the only other woman in the department. She told me in confidence that her ex gave her that BS excuse of, it's not what it looks like, and she asked back, then what is it supposed to look like? He had the audacity to say that he was possessed by demons and tempted by the devil to cheat on her. So his actions weren't his own and he should be forgiven because it's not his fault that he's being tested by God. 
I tried really hard to sympathize with her, but I tried even harder not to lose it in front of her. Steak Not Cake says, I'm glad she's taken out the trash. Seems like her life is a lot better and happier without all these toxic people in it. Sufficient Way 3663 says, Two freaking years? That is absolutely absurd. I cannot fathom having to reach a point of divorcing my spouse and then having to wait an additional two years to finally be free. Especially since a lot of people won't start dating someone until everything is final, be it either because of feeling like it's still cheating and unfaithful, or because the other person doesn't want to risk their new partner going back to their spouse. Sounds like a law that needs to be updated so much. And yeah, that is a really weird law, isn't it? Why? Like, what's the justification for having to stay with someone for two years before you're allowed to divorce them? New Zealand, you're weird. But how scary is it that OP might never have found out that these two were cheating? Because at some point it could have just fizzled out and they could have stopped seeing each other and all would have gone back to normal. It kind of does make you wonder how common something like this is, or I would hope uncommon something like that is out in the world. Also doubly insane knowing how bad of an influence the mother is, and yet the sister, after doing wrong, sets the hounds on OP by unleashing the mother, giving OP's number to the mother and just being like, hey, go harass her some more. I did wrong, and I'm going to give you a biased story, uh, and now you need to just go lash her some more because that's such a cool thing to do. I feel absolutely terribly for OP for everything that has happened here, but... You know, maybe a blessing in disguise. She's getting rid of a lot of trash in her life, setting new hard boundaries, and, you know, living better, I hope, than everyone else here. It seems to be that way. So yeah, after all that, I'm very happy for you, OP, and I do hope that your life continues to be filled with blessings every day. Am I the asshole for telling my wife that we are not going to pay our fair share for her parents' assisted living? This whole situation has gotten way out of hand, to the point that everyone is yelling at everyone, and I'm sleeping in the guest bedroom. My wife's parents are at a point in their lives where they can no longer live by themselves. Their children decided the best place for them is an assisted living facility. They started to look into different facilities, and admittedly, I didn't help because I figured the five adult siblings could handle it, and I was never close to my in-laws. They found one that was perfect, and my wife was very excited when she told me about it. I was less than thrilled when I found out our contribution will be roughly $3,000 up front and then $5,000 a month. I immediately questioned why it cost roughly $15,000 up front and $25,000 a month for two people in an assisted living apartment. I admit, I sarcastically asked if their apartment is next door to Elon Musk's parents. She then told me that we are going to cover the lion's share of the costs because we make more than her siblings. That was the beginning of a week of texts, phone, and in-person arguments. She argues that her siblings make less money combined than we do, and some are single, so it would impact them more, so it's only fair that we pay more. She also argues that this facility is not the best or most expensive, it's a mid-tier one with their best ratings. According to her, anything lower has bad ratings and could put a parent's safety in jeopardy. My argument is that there are five siblings, so the cost should be divided equally between the five of them. I also argued that if five people can't afford that place, they need to lower their standards. That started a circular argument for hours between cost and safety. I couldn't take it anymore, and in the heat of the moment, I yelled. We don't make more than your brothers and sisters, I make more than all of you, which is why you want me to cover the cost of your parents. That was the beginning of my night sleeping in the guest bedroom. I know, as a married couple, I shouldn't consider mine and yours income, but realistically, I do make more than all of them, and I think it's unfair to make me pay the largest portion. What do you all think? I think she made a unilateral decision and didn't let you know until everyone else had agreed upon what you were going to pay. I think you have every right to be pissed off in this situation, and I do think you have every right to yell at her in this situation, because what the hell, man? I'd be just as pissed off as you are in this situation, because that's a lot of money, and that seems like way more money than these people are having to pay themselves. I want to know how much each of these siblings are having to fork over, compared to how much you are having to fork over. 
Your wife is being incredibly unrealistic in this circumstance, and you are being more than taken advantage of. Not the asshole OP. In the comments, Zookeeper007 says, I'm pretty sure alimony would be cheaper. Not the asshole. Either that or pay for a live-in carer. If that doesn't work, they have no choice but to sell the property. No reason for them to assume that OP should be financially responsible for their parents. Why doesn't the brother who will be living in the house who can't afford more than $300 become the carer? I bet he would do it for less than 10 k a month. In all fairness, depending on what the health of the parents is like, he might not be qualified to take care of them. For instance, when my nana's dementia had progressed to a certain point, my mother and aunts and uncles, who had been alternating her care amongst the family, suddenly found themselves at a loss as she became unable to do more things, but also she became emotionally and even physically abusive to them, no longer able to understand what was happening to her and why. So it highly depends on their conditions whether or not a regular person can adequately care for them. Not the asshole. The fact that you were left out of a decision process and then expected to pony up the equivalent of a $700,000 mortgage payment is a really unreasonable ask. The cost should be split evenly. If it can't be afforded, then they need to find a cheaper place. I would not be a part of a family that uses just marry a guy who makes a lot of money and have him pay for it as their long-term parent's care plan. There is definitely a lack of communication here. The parent's financial situation should have been a point of discussion for years leading up to this. There should be no untouchable assets before the parents get to the point of relying on the charity of others. They are not pleasant conversations, but they need to be had by everyone involved. The wife needed to insist on checking with you prior to any decisions. Even if she was the primary earner, these are conversations that have massive consequences on the household. People in proper relationships make these decisions together. As for the house, if selling is a deal breaker, then there is a whole bunch of other options that need to be discussed. Maybe it gets refinanced, or there is an asset transfer, maybe the one brother finds his own place and they rent it out and use that to bring down costs a bit. Not great options, but at least exploring it shows that people just didn't dump the problems on the richest sibling's spouse. And Call Me Baby 92 says, Not the asshole. Of course, in a marriage, there shouldn't be a mine and yours argument going on, but the fact that your wife agreed to pay more, knowing it's coming out of your income, isn't acceptable. It is not your parents. If the five siblings single-handedly cannot afford it, it is too expensive. I could never imagine paying so much, and I also have four siblings. None of us could afford that, single or married. Not your parents, not your problem. Either they find a cheaper option, or they divide it equally under the five siblings, no spouses. Update. I'm going to answer some questions. 1. I assumed it was $25,000 a month because I assumed that it was split five ways between the siblings, and our share was $5,000 a month. It'll be closer to $10,000 a month, and our share is $5,000. 2. Her parents have assets, including a house, so I was told they don't qualify for government assistance. I brought up the idea of selling their house, but was shot down immediately. The siblings want to keep the house in the family because their great-grandfather built it or something. 3. I can afford to pay it, but I don't want to based on principle. Their division means I'll be paying $5,000 a month, while the youngest brother will be paying only $300 a month and will be living in a house. Their thinking is that he'll be paying the insurance and taxes on the house, so he can't afford more than $300. Another update. 4. I'm the only child to my parents. While they planned out their retirement, they worked their entire lives to put me through school and supported me through several degrees. I will be solely responsible for and will make sure their remaining days will be comfortable. 5. Per your suggestion, I asked my wife that if we're going to contribute this much to her parents, how they're going to contribute to my parents when their time comes. She answered, oh, don't be an idiot, that's an entirely different situation. <laughs> 6. I don't want ownership of their house because it's very old and needs major work. I brought up the idea of selling the house again, and it was shot down again. They are not budging on it. 7. None of us knows the laws and regulations when it comes to this, so I finally got her to agree for us to sit down with an estate attorney. And eight, unless I feel up to it, this is probably the last update. I feel completely emotionally drained. I always knew my parents would get old, 
but I never thought about it. And I guess to just round this one out, that point number five, oh, don't be stupid, this is an entirely different situation. If, if she said that to me, I'm like, no, I'm not paying anything towards your parents then. Uh, double standards and whatnot, huh? So it's cool that I give a gigantic chunk of money to your parents every month indefinitely, but if your siblings have to give anything to my parents' retirement, that's suddenly a bridge too far? Get absolutely screwed, you know? All I can hope is that OP stands their ground in this one and does what is best for themselves. Unexposed is by user sadaccess1721, titled, My Sex Addiction is Ruining My Life. Apparently NSFW, I don't know what the trigger warning is going to be. I, male 24, have been diagnosed with compulsive sexual behavior. I see people online saying that they have hypersexuality, but they never dive deep into what it actually is. Up until a few months ago, I couldn't get shit done, I couldn't do things I like, and I couldn't keep stable relationships because I feared I might cheat on them. I self-pleasured constantly, I watched a ton of Cornhub, and at that point, it's almost all I thought about. I'm a software engineer, and while I'm doing my work, that is the only time I don't think about it. I like my job, but for a while, my addiction has been seeping into my work too. I almost got caught self-pleasuring in the bathroom. I've most likely had sex with over 100 people. It makes me feel disgusting and unlovable though no one would be able to tell because of how plain I act. I am seen as a very dry person with a monotone voice. Okay, before you come at me, this is not me. I didn't write this story, okay? I'm here to beat the accusations. This is not a marquee self-post. Though, as of late, I have been watching this girl. She hangs out with my roommate and friend often. She came into my room once after mistaking it for my roommates. She took some socks from my drawer when I caught her. For context, my roommate dropped juice on her and it soaked into her socks. She's really sweet and has been making a lot of effort to try and get to know me, even baking me sweets and randomly talking to me when she comes over. I really like her and have been thinking of her non-stop. I want to ask her out, but there is no reason not to. I'd screw it up, so it motivated me to try to get some help. I'm doing the therapy, doing the program, participating in groups, and have been medicated. I've been doing this for six months. It's been absolutely killing me. I'm really trying. I asked my therapist if maybe I should attempt to ask the girl out, and she told me that it'd be a bad idea, and if it went south, it could make me rebound. Now I just found out that some guy likes her, and now I'm afraid of losing her. I've been keeping her close to me this whole time to keep some type of relationship with her. It's killing me because my illness only has a 5% recovery rate, though I feel like I am truly getting better. My self-pleasure amount has gone down significantly. My libido has definitely been lowered too, most likely because of the meds. I just want to ask her out, but my therapist told me that I need to stop using her as a motive because it's a danger to my recovery. Maybe I do, but I just wish I didn't have this. I'm probably shortening this situation a lot, but it is a lot. Edit, I'll wait to ask her out. I was going to do that anyway. I just felt some type of way last night though some of the comments really gave me a different point of view. I'll start trying to change my goal in my mind, most likely change my goal to bettering myself at work, because as I said, I love my job and I love the people that I work with. I don't want to lose my job over my problem. I'll update in a few months hopefully. Maybe six? Not saying I'd be fully cured by then, but I'm definitely halfway there so far. In the comments, Ambitious Mud says... I genuinely think you should wait and that your therapist is right. You should be doing this for yourself. I know that it'd be hard since she was the original goal. I still think you can do this though. You've already succeeded in so much. Maybe wait a few more months and see where you are before you speak about it again. And OP replies, Yeah, you're right. I think I will. The last thing I want to do is rebound because if I do, it won't matter if she dates someone or not. But yeah, she is my original goal. Please think about her in this. You want to ask her out, but what does she want? There is no guarantee that asking her out will end in her saying yes. There is no guarantee that she is looking to date anybody at all, and there is no guarantee that she isn't already seeing people that you don't know about. You aren't with her 24-7, so how would you know? She doesn't have to tell people she's seeing someone casually before making it official. This woman owes you nothing. 
She didn't ask for you to do this. She didn't ask for you to make her your goal. She isn't a goal. She's a person. She may be going on dates, or she may have no interest in dating anybody at all. Your therapist is right. Her being your goal is not healthy or productive for your own wellness because this woman has made no promises of being with you if and when you are ready, when you're recovered, or for any other reason. She is not yours just because you want her to be, and you are not losing her because she is a person and people are not property. I'm glad that having romantic feelings for a woman instead of purely sexual feelings has made you want to get better, but her being a nice person and you trying to get better doesn't give you dibs. Even if you didn't have this addiction, there is no guarantee that you'd end up in a relationship with her, and part of your journey to wellness is realizing that. Another part of your journey is realizing that by making her a goal, you are objectifying her and taking away her choices because if she says no to you, suddenly she's the bad guy for making you relapse. Listen to your therapist. They probably went into thousands of dollars of crippling student debt just so that they have the education and knowledge to give you professional advice. Please do not delete this post or edit it in any way and show it to your therapist at your next session. It's important if you want to recover. OP replies, The crippling student debt part made me laugh. Also, I guess I was being a bit obsessive. Well, really obsessive. I think I'm going to try and change my goal. I don't feel like I can automatically change the goal of recovery because I want to better myself. A big part of why people can't or won't recover from this is because they don't feel worthy. So I think maybe I can change my goal to better my work at my job because I feel like that would be more attainable for my mind right now. Seeing her as a goal takes away that she's an actual person. You were definitely right. Though at least she helped me get on track, even if she doesn't know it. She actually invited me to hang out tomorrow with others. I usually say no, but I feel like I should try to hang out around more people other than her. I will show this post to my therapist. I see her in two days. Update, my sex addiction is ruining my life, my friend has betrayed me. So it's only been about a month since I made the last post, but something scary happened two weeks ago, and I don't know whether to think that it's a bad thing yet. Backstory for those who don't want to read my last post, but I have a sex addiction. I have been working at recovery for about seven months. So far, four months without a hookup, and two months without watching porn. I only started doing this because I feel in love with a girl, but I knew I'd never be able to have a relationship with her if I stayed like this. Though, as advised in my last post, I should change my goal, and I have. Though I am still good friends with the girl. Anyway, I have two best friends. The friend in question, who I am extremely upset at, has been my friend since I was 13. Let's call this friend John. John has been one of my most trusted friends, and recently, I've been in a rut and thought that maybe having some support from a friend would help. So I told John everything. John, from what I saw, took it well and offered his ear whenever I would need it. I also told him that I've slept with over 100 people, which was the only thing that I could visibly see that off put him. I told him I just wanted my life back on track so I could be normal and get to the true place that I want to in my field of work. This is where the problem happens. A few days later, I go and hang out with him, my roommate, and the rest of the group. This group includes the girl who I will call Katie. Katie has been giving me weird looks the whole time that I was there and is avoiding talking to me. I go to my roommate and ask if Katie is okay, and he just gives me this look of sadness. He brings me into a room away from everyone and tells me that John told everyone, including Katie, about my sex addiction and how I've slept with over 100 people how I am disgusting, and even almost got caught masturbating at my job. He also failed to tell them that I was getting intensive help for my issues, but what he did tell me was that I had a major crush on Katie and had been masturbating to her Instagram photos, which I certainly did not. I would never violate her like that. He also told them not to tell me because we shouldn't shame him for his mental illness. I get upset and tell my roommate that yes, I do have a sex addiction, and that yes, I did almost get caught trying to masturbate at my job, but I never masturbated to any photos of Katie, and I'm getting intensive help with my issues. I also told him that I've been taking Prozac, which has lowered my libido by a lot, in the last coming weeks. I've been getting help for seven months. He tells me that he believes me, and I thought, wow, I thought he'd think I was lying. 
He dropped another bomb on me, saying that John has a huge crush on Katie and probably did this to hurt my reputation with her, that he has lived with me long enough to know that I wasn't that shitty and how he didn't trust John after the way that he exposed my shit like that to the whole group. He asked me that if I'd like, he would help me tell her what happened. He asked John if he could go out and get some beer for us, and John asked me if I'd like to go. Holding back all of my hatred, I told him in a calm voice, no thanks. He leaves and I walk into my roommate's room. My roommate asks Katie to go speak to him for a moment. She says sure, and opens the door to my roommate's room to see me. She gives me an extremely disgusted face, which to be honest, really hurt me. My roommate tells her that John lied to her about what I did and likes her, and that's why he tried to ruin my reputation. She is obviously shocked about this, and then after some more explanation and reasoning for my roommate, apologizes for assuming I was a pervert with a sex addiction, to which I had to prematurely explain to her that yes I did. I asked the roommate to leave the room for a bit. He does so and closes the door. Katie looks at me and apologizes again for assuming that I would do that to her. I told her that there was no need and people are sick like that. It's not her fault for protecting herself. I then explained that I do have a sex addiction and have been working on progressing to my recovery for 7 months, that I did have sex with over 100 people and that I did have a crush on her. I didn't tell her that she was my goal, I didn't want to put any more weight on her than I already have. I told her that I wanted to ask her out and realized that it would never work because of my issues and how it had got me thinking on how I can't live a normal life in general, how I felt like I'd lose the best job that I'd ever have if this kept up. She completely understood and thanked me for being honest. She told me she actually did have a crush on me, but once John lied to her, she got creeped out. I asked her if she was being truthful about liking me, and she told me she was being serious. She told me it wouldn't be right to date right now because of what's going on with me, and I agreed, though she said that if I do hit a good recovery point, that she would love to go out on a date. I agreed. I don't know if she'll actually wait for me to recover, but it is a nice thought. I will not be rushing my recovery though. I want to be cured sustainably. So, we come out, John isn't back yet, but my roommate has explained to our group of friends of John's lie. Some of them still gave me grossed out faces when finding out about my issue, but the others were very supportive. When John walked in, all hell broke loose. Katie was screaming at him about how he could betray his friend in need like that, how he was disgusting and selfish, and she would never want to be with someone like him. My roommate laid into him and told him that he wasn't welcome in his apartment anymore. My other friends who were there also cast him off. It feels like my support group has grown from 1 to 7, though losing a lifelong friend is definitely hurting me. My other best friend, who was friends with both me and John, has also cut John off. Apparently John has done something similar to him, just got gaslit into thinking that it was justified. I also have a plant now. It's a bonsai tree. It is thriving and so am I. I hung out with Katie recently and that was nice. It's nice to be able to be around people. Since this happened about two weeks ago, things are still a bit awkward. John has consistently been leaving me nasty messages, but oh well. I'm still extremely worried though about the future, especially because my business was just thrown out there by someone who was supposed to be my best friend. Hopefully everything goes well. Edit. I just looked at his messages out of curiosity, so I'm bisexual and he knows that. He's just been calling me the F-slur and calling me a thief, how I'll cheat once we start dating, how I should just stick to men and stop being greedy because what woman would love me? I kind of didn't want to block him in hopes of him apologizing and maybe to talk it out, but no. I blocked him on everything and just sent his messages to the group chat that I have with my roommate and Katie and they are currently clowning him. In the comments, Echo Pudding says, Whoa, what an effing update, dude. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Very glad that this did not ruin your recovery progress. Friendship betrayals are one of the worst betrayals to me. I'm wishing you well. OP replies, Yeah, I'm not letting that jerk ruin me. Thanks, man. Best of luck with your recovery. Glad to hear everyone around you that matters is being supportive. Look, on the bright side, with John being exposed like the manipulator that he is, you don't have to worry about him making it hard whenever you struggle. 
Addictions are a hell of a thing to beat, and it won't be easy, but us internet strangers believe in you. Quote, I also have a plant now, it's a bonsai tree. Also, I love this random addition. Welcome to the bonsai gang. My bonsai tree that probably isn't really a bonsai tree and is just some cheap thing that I got at Walmart, but it's been going strong for about six years and is more of a small bush now. Small things to care for can really help you in the long run, like with my own depression struggles. And OP replies, Ha! Huh. In my last post, it was said that I should get a plant because taking care of something small could help me. So basically what you said. I ended up going to a plant shop and buying the bonsai, then I ordered a book online and have been learning how to care for my beautiful bonsai. I am very happy that I told John when I was in a better stage of recovery. I am also happy that he exposed himself. So now I can continue my recovery in peace. Thanks for the kind words, stranger. And yeah, I'm very happy for you too, OP. John is an absolute piece of garbage for what he's done to you. The fact that he can be there alongside you for the majority of both of your lives and then turn this around on you in order to get a girl and then expect everyone not to say anything about it is absolutely insane. It's just a girl. Jesus, man. OP, are we sure that you're the one with the mental illness here and not John because he's willing to go to such extreme lengths over just a person? He's the one exhibiting some absolutely insane mental illness if you ask me. Am I the asshole for giving my future mother-in-law three days to pay me for a new wedding dress or else I show the family a photo of her wearing it? So I'm getting married to my fiancé soon. I bought my wedding dress a few weeks ago. His mother, my future mother-in-law, kept pestering me about trying it on, but I firmly refused. I finally shut it down after she offered me $100 to let her try it on. Her reasoning for persisting so much? She says it's because of her love for wedding dresses and her obsession with them. Fast forward to yesterday, I came home from work early and I found my fiancé at home. He freaked out after seeing me and tried to prevent me from going into my room while trying to text somebody on his phone. I opened the door and was shocked to see his mum standing there wearing my dress. I instantly pulled out my phone and took a photo of her in it. She and my fiancé freaked out after I told her that she needed to pay me for a new dress in three days or else I'll show the whole family the photo. She started crying and then left and my fiancé blew up at me saying that I can't be serious and that I overreacted because his mum just wanted to try the dress on. No harm done. But I refused to listen to him because in my opinion, the dress should only be worn by the bride and the bride only. Quite frankly, I felt disgusted looking at that dress again. I don't want it anymore, and so I think that it's fair that she pays me after she ruined it for me. He yelled at me and told me to wake up and stop treating his mum like that as if she was an enemy. We had a fight after he failed to get me to back down, and he's been staying with his mum since then. I felt awful, but I spent 3k on this dress and worked hard to get it. I can't stand looking at it, but people in my family think I'm escalating things and risking my relationship with not only my future mother-in-law, but my fiancé as well. Am I the asshole? I wonder if people in your family would also be happy with something like this happening to them. Obviously, they can sit on the fence and just yell at you because it's not happening to them, and that's a much easier position to be far removed from the drama than directly affecting them, but that's just not cool for them to be saying that. I think the fact that your fiancé hid this from you and continued to hide it from you and then is seemingly gaslighting you into saying that you're the problem here and not him and his mother speaks volumes about him as a person. This is a marriage. This is a partnership that the both of you are entering into where you both need to be each other's top priorities and he's not prioritizing you at all, OP. Like, of course you're escalating things and risking your relationship with them because they've been assholes to you. The escalation on your end is not the problem. It's completely understandable given what they've done to you and they seem to be continuing to die on the hill that they're on. Like, the mental gymnastics required in order for people to convince themselves that you're in the wrong here is astounding. Not the asshole, for my opinion. In the comments, Moose Live says, Not the asshole, but are you sure you want to marry this guy? He stood guard outside your bedroom so that his mother could try on your wedding dress. Do you think he will ever stand up for you against her? Also, I think all the incest suggestions are way off base. 
He is just an asshole who can't say no to his mother and is prepared to deceive OP if it will shut his mother up. His mother, on the other hand, is controlling, manipulative, and deceitful, and will probably be an absolutely horrible mother-in-law should OP choose to go through with this marriage. Edit 2. Quote, I think all the incest suggestions are way off base. This was in reference to the suggestions that OP's fiancé was in, or looking for, a physical relationship with his mother. Emotional incest is a very distinct possibility. Thanks to everyone who pointed this out. Rain Squirrel says, send the photo to everyone invited, with an announcement that regretfully, you will no longer be participating in the wedding, but you wish the couple the best. Vicious. I love it. Well, not vicious, just honest. Mummy is the one he really wants as a bride. This is what I was thinking. He wanted to see his mum in the dress because he wanted to imagine marrying his mum in the dress. What the hell? Sick shit. Good luck ever competing with future mother-in-law if you decide to marry this dude. Next thing you know, his mum will be offering you sex advice because I'm his mum. I've known his bot- I can't even say that. I've known his body longer, so I know what he likes better. What's wrong with you? He saw his mum in the dress before he saw his fiance in it, and he thinks it's no big deal. His terms are abusive. No Facebook for a month? He's a controlling jerk, and he will only get worse after marriage. He couldn't care less about her feelings. Dump the narcs, not the asshole. That one is the most suspicious. The only reason I can think of for why he doesn't want to run Facebook or in the family group chat is that they want to spin this story and write stuff about OP, and they don't want her seeing it and setting the record straight or supplying her side of the story. A terrible friendo says, not the asshole, but the problem isn't just your future mother-in-law, it's your fiance. He let her in. He was going to lie and hide from you that she tried it on. He is defending her actions. He disrespected your belongings. He didn't care about your feelings and still doesn't. He has shown that he doesn't care about your boundaries. He decided his mother's want to try it on is more important than your feelings, and that won't go away when you're married. Personally, my petty self would call off the engagement, and the announcement of that would be the picture of his mum in the wedding dress, stating... Unfortunately, I cannot marry blank. It appears he's already married and emotionally committed to his mother. At the bare minimum, you should postpone until he can respect your boundaries. Update. Oh my god, this blew up. And so I thought I'd add some updates. My fiancé called and offered to pay for the dress himself so we can end the conflict, but he wants me to hand him my phone so he can delete the photo himself. Swear that I don't have any copies to use against his mum later, apologize to his mum, and lastly, he asked that I quit his family group chat and log out of Facebook for at least a month. I haven't responded yet. P.S. He called with these offers and conditions hours ago, but I didn't want to include this in the post, but now I did. Also, I'm not sure if I'll agree because I don't want him to pay for it, I want his mum, the one who wore it, to pay for it. Not being vicious, but trying to hold her accountable. And yeah, I do think that she deserves to be held accountable in this situation, but it does seem as though he's very much married to his mother, given these archaic conditions. I don't know about you, OP, but if I was in this instance, that would be a deal breaker for me, and I'd just cut my losses. It's better to be on your own than to deal with these two as a package deal. No thanks. Our next post is by user TA23454, titled, My father has somehow found me after disowning me. What should I do? This is a throwaway account. If you're wondering about a lack of information, it's because I hate thinking about this effed up situation. I'll give a very brief description of why this matters so much to me. My ex-girlfriend cheated on me, and after I found out and confronted her about it, she got scared and told nearly everybody that we knew that I had assaulted her to cover up her cheating. I was placed in custody during the investigation, however, I was released as there was no evidence. My parents had already disowned me, and most of my friends had distanced themselves from me. I wasn't even proven innocent by a jury, so my parents still believed me to be an assaulter who had gotten lucky. My best friend began to help me behind their backs, and I ran away. 
I had nothing to lose, as nobody liked or even approached me, and my college barred me from attending classes, only emailing me the work and bringing me in for exams. I went as far away from that town as I could, and got an apartment after working in some community jobs for some money, and managed to sort of stabilize myself. I decided to change my name after a while because I came to hate looking at it for some reason. I still don't know why. This helped me start a new slate, and I made a few new friends when I went into uni. Again, I don't know why I did this, I'm still in truckloads of debt, and was incredibly poor looking back. I finished my degree in teaching, and moved far away to a country on the opposite side of the globe, where I live now. I got a nice apartment and settled down into my new job. I eventually met a girl who turned out to be my now wife. I originally couldn't trust her, and after realizing how much patience she had with me, I would flinch if she tried to touch me or I'd start fidgeting when she'd get close, I fell head over heels for her. She eventually gave birth to my twin daughter and son, who I adore, and will defend to the edge of the universe. Her family got used to me very quickly considering I was a foreigner and not very trusted. They treated me well, and I sort of remembered how a loving family actually is. Now I'm living in a nice house with both of my children and wife, and we are very happy. That is until last night when I was playing on our PlayStation with my son while my wife and daughter were in the garden. There is a knock on the door, and lo and behold, my father is there. He smiled weakly and began to speak, but I slammed the door so hard that I scared my son. I took him to his room and called for my wife to take my daughter to her bed. She was freaking out, and so was I. My father kept knocking on the door, and I just broke down in the moment. My wife comforted me, then answered the door for me. She asked who he was, and he said he was my father. I had given my wife a vague background of me, and she had nothing but sorrow for me. She looked pissed understandably, and began to scream at my father for abandoning me and whatnot. After she calmed down, I told her to let him in, and for her to go to our kid's bedroom and keep them busy while I talked to my dad. He said that he was doing my ex-girlfriend a favor and clearing some stuff on her phone, and while he was clearing out some messages on her phone, he saw a conversation between her and the guy that she was cheating on me with, basically expressing the guilt for ruining my life, and that she wanted to take it all back. My father didn't confront her, as he wasn't ready to bring back a dead situation, but silently began to hunt for me to tell me that he believed me. I don't even know how he found me, but I don't care because he's here. Now for the part that I need help on. I don't know what to do. I've considered my options alone after walking through some random streets, and I've come to some conclusions, but I'm not sure what the best decision is. 1. Turn him away and tell him to go back to our country and leave me alone, or 2. Reconcile with him and tell my mother. If there's a better option, then please let me know. I'm stressing out hard here and am planning to take the day off work tomorrow. My father is in an apartment nearby, so I'll probably go to him with my answer. Thanks in advance. In the comments, Genacious says, quote, He said that he was doing my ex-girlfriend a favor by clearing some stuff on her phone. Is that not odd to you? 1. Why would he still have contact with her? 2. Why would he snoop on her phone? People just trying to help don't go breaking into phones. This is a red flag. The man disowned you, still has contact with a woman who ruined your life, found the truth by being a snoop, and somehow stalked you halfway across the globe. Is this the chaos that you're ready to unleash on your family? OP replies, You're right, not much of it adds up. It's such a messy situation, and I hate being put in this position. I'm struggling to find the right words to say to him and to answer everything. Random Questioners says, Oh sweetie, this was really brutal to hear. People who make false allegations should be sued and jailed. It ruins people's lives. This was absolutely ridiculous. The best advice I can give is to keep him out of your life. He was so willing to dump you so fast, without even spending enough time to talk it out with you. Not to mention you're already happy with the life that you have without them. Of course, you can choose to forgive whoever you want, but I wonder what his motive to try to reconcile was. Best of luck, dear. Thanks for sharing your story. And OP replies, Thank you. I would like to go down the eye for an eye route and just not let him go near my family. I'm not the most forgiving person in retrospect. He has to live with the consequences of his actions. My advice is to forgive him, but that doesn't mean that you have to allow him back in your life after doing so. So forgive and never see him again. Completely your call though. 
Yeah, I feel like given that weird background of how he came to the conclusion that you weren't at fault here, I don't really believe it. So, you know, maybe do forgive him and say, you know, thank you for reaching out. But given how shady this is all of a sudden, I would keep my distance and I'd be like, let's just go no contact or very restricted low contact, absolutely. Like, we definitely hear about these things all the time, and I feel like more often than not, it doesn't end well. And this father has kind of just given me the heebie-jeebies. I don't know. I don't like his vibes. Update. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry that I haven't said anything recently, but I came to the decision that I would not reconcile with my father. I simply couldn't find it in myself to forgive him. Some of you might want a story, so here is how it went down the day after I made the post. I visited my father in his hotel, and I told him that I wouldn't reconcile with him or anything like that. He had tears in his eyes, but was understanding. He said he told my mother about her, and cut my ex-girlfriend off from the family entirely. I asked him why there was still contact, as many of you questioned, and he said that she apparently felt too guilty to really let us go. I'm not too inclined to believe it, as were many of you, but it's closure enough for me. Apparently my mother didn't take the news too well and tried to get my phone number, but my father didn't let in. I'm not sure what I could really trust given that I feel most of it's just a ploy to get me back into their lives, but after they threw me out onto the streets like a rabid dog, it just makes me sick. My son did end up asking who was at the door, but I told him that it was a colleague. I plan to tell both of them what happened to me in the past when they're older, or going through tough times, to let them know that I understand. We're all fine. It shook me up a bit, but I hope that I have my father's word in him keeping my new life a secret. If anything else happens, I'll keep you updated, but I think the matter is resolved for now. Thank you all so much for the support and good words. If anyone you know has gone through the things that I have, be there for them. You cannot throw them to the streets. Always stay alongside them and make sure they're happy, even if they have to move across the planet to be so. In the comments, Susie Kubert says, You deserve peace, OP. I hope that your parents respect your wishes, and that you're able to lead the life that you want to from now on. Good luck and take good care. You made a tough decision, OP. You don't owe anyone anything. Final update, titled, I Got Closure From My Family. This is my first time posting to this community, so I'll give some backstory. I grew up in a perfectly normal middle-class family, they raised me well, and I was living a good life. Then I got a girlfriend, and at the start, she was amazing. We had many of the same hobbies and went along well. Then I discovered that she was cheating on me, and before I could out her, she threatened to tell everybody that I had assaulted her. I thought she was bluffing, but she actually did it, and my family disowned me. I was released from custody due to lack of evidence, but I wasn't able to be tried and acquitted. Therefore, my parents thought that I was a assaulter who had gotten away with it. I decided that I would start a clean slate, I stayed with my best friends for a while before getting copies of all my major information and running away. I got a teaching degree and moved to another country where I met my wife and had my twin daughter and son, was living peacefully before my father found me, and it kicked off a chain of events that leads to this post. I recently had an incident with my family involving them breaking a promise. It angered me incredibly, and after a lot of thought, I decided I would face them directly. I flew back to my home country and met with everybody involved, my mum, dad, brother, and even the girl who accused me. I was nervous of course, but I was shocked when I realised I didn't really see them as family. I recognised them of course, but I didn't see them the way that I see my wife, kids, and in-laws. My mother started by breaking into tears and trying to apologise. I just felt disgusted by it. My father comforted my mother, and my brother was the one who kept his composure and initiated conversation. He asked me how I was doing, and I responded by telling him to cut any small talk, and that this meeting was on my terms. I told all of them that I was not looking for reconciliation, and I simply wanted closure. I made sure to tell them that I would call the police should they attempt to chase me. I asked my parents why they were so quick to abandon me, even though the police said there was no proof. They said that they made a rash decision, and seeing me in custody broke their hearts. I called them out on it since they didn't try to stick up for me or anything, so I then asked what some people on my original post had said about my father looking through my accuser's phone. 
He said that she came in to ask him to clear off her phone of non-essential stuff, and that's when she saw the chat logs with her friends. My dad was always good with technology, so while it wasn't fulfilling, I accepted it. I then asked my brother why he never contacted me. He looked surprised and said that he did, but I just ignored him all that time. It turns out he was right. My brother had tried hundreds of times to contact me and give me money to get me off of rock bottom, but questioned why I never answered and assumed that I hated him because of what happened. Well, as it turns out, my mother had my contacts blocked in all of her phone plans as she paid for my brother's old phone plan, so I couldn't even receive help when I was completely lost. Then the cherry on top, my ex. I first asked her why she actually did it. She said that she was scared of what would happen and that she never stopped loving me even throughout it all. She said that every session of therapy made her feel even more guilty as if she knew that it was all fake. She then told me that she hadn't dated anyone since in hopes that I would come back and she could apologize. Because I'm sorry would really reverse time and fix all of it apparently. Even that was bullshit because my father said that he found chat logs of three different partners she had when I was away. My ex broke down crying and tried to hold my hand. She had the effing audacity to ask for another chance. This just made me spiteful and I pulled out my phone and began showing them all of the hundreds of pictures of my two children's milestones and good times that my family had together. Our visits to cities, their first day of school, both of them in my wife and my arms. I told them that this was what she could have had if she wasn't so stupid and my parents what they missed out on for not even hearing me out. I had a moment when I thought that I'd gone too far, but I realized, compared to what they did to me, I hadn't. My visit wasn't all miserable though, as I met up with my old best friend and his family. They were happy to see me, and I was still grateful to them for taking me in when it felt like the whole world was against me. I plan to return to the country one day to show my kids where half of their culture comes from. I won't let them anywhere near my family though. As far as I'm concerned, my only family is my wife and her family and my kids. I'd say it went pretty well. Edit, as some of you asked, I've decided that I would allow my brother to fly over and meet his niece and nephew. I completely forgot to mention it in the post. Apologies. I hesitated at first as me and my brother weren't really on great terms growing up. Brotherly rivalry and all that. Would I be the asshole if I left my fiancé destitute? I might not be in the right state of mind, but I had to get this off my chest. Two days ago, I came back from basketball a little early. I overheard my fiancé Jay tell her friend that she is settling for me. This friend just got out of a relationship. I don't know what they were talking about before, but I just heard Jay saying that after all the assholes she dated, settling for me will be good for her. She then went on to describe my job and all the perks of being with me. Love is apparently not on the list. Hearing this kind of broke me. I just stood in place dumbfounded. I don't even think she loves me. For context, we live in a beach house. I bought it as a total gut job and renovated it myself, and I have several other properties that are all rented out. I work in property finance from home and do house flips on the side. I'm satisfied with what I've accomplished so far in my life. All of this was worth mentioning for Jay, but not how much I loved her, how much time we spent together, not how I tried to be supportive of her goals and ambitions, how she wanted for nothing. I'm not going to lie, I was in a bad place. Maybe still am. I spent all of last night going through her messages. I knew her password, I just never looked. Well, it's a pretty common thing for her to say. Pretty much all of her friends know what's up. Jay wants a nice, normal guy after all the assholes that she dated. She wants a drama-free life where she'll be taken care of. Every time I read what she really thought about me, it was like another needle was being jammed in my heart. My first reaction was to yell at her and confront her about it. My second reaction was to make her suffer like I am. My dear Jay, the love of my life, I thought, doesn't work right now. She quit to be a real estate agent. I don't know, maybe she wanted to learn more about real estate. Maybe she thought her looks would get her by. She doesn't work right now. Zero. She also lives in my house. She decorated it and certainly put her touches on everything, but my name is on the title. Just mine. Her car is technically mine too. 
She didn't qualify for financing on her own, and she can just have a Beamer, so I co-signed it. I can probably make a case that that's my car. We don't have joint accounts. Thank the Almighty himself, because she did ask. I pay her cards right now. I just want to show her the texts, throw her shit in garbage bags, and put her out on the street. Would I be the asshole if I did that? No, not at all. I feel like you're very much justified for doing that, OP, and I'm surprised you haven't already. Though I can understand why you're hesitant and why you're reaching out to neutral third parties for, you know, some guidance on this. She's made it clear that being with you is more than a means to an end, and I think that's enough justification for you to separate and just get rid of her from your life because she doesn't value you like a partner should. So you would not be the asshole if you did it, OP. In the comments, Status Pattern 7539 says, Not the asshole. You aren't leaving her destitute. Think of it as you leaving her with exactly what she brought into the relationship. You are not married, you don't have kids, you saw love, and she saw a piggy bank. She didn't quit her job to try something else, that was her excuse so that she could get you to support her jobless ass. No Scarcity says, Nope, not the asshole. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Fortunately, you found out before you became even more entangled or married. It seriously sucks, and it'll probably be a while before you can throw her out. You'll probably have to evict her. A BMW? Really? She's got expensive taste, huh? Well, guess who shouldn't settle? You, dude. You can do a whole lot better, and I seriously doubt that she can. I wish I could give more than one upvote. I have been with assholes before. You know what my reaction to my beautiful, smart, loving, kind partner was? Wow, I hope this human being could love me as much as I love him. And he does. Oh, and his family is better off than mine. That couldn't mean less to me. Not the asshole, OP. That beer needs to learn what love is. Stability is important. A meal ticket is not. Right? OP should ask himself if his partner would stay if he lost everything. Would she step up and support if he decided to go back to school to fulfill a dream or change careers? That's what a true partner would do, and it doesn't sound like she would. He should ask her that question seriously, and gauge her reaction. I know one thing, and that I loved my late husband beyond anything. He travelled for work, Monday to Friday, and every time he pulled out of the driveway Monday mornings, I got teary. The biggest disagreement we ever had was me telling him that I would give up the big house in the country and live in a trailer if I could just wake up to him every morning. Nine months later, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. I'd gladly have stayed right by his side, even if he was severely disabled for life, if I could just have him in my life for the rest of mine. He passed three months after diagnosis, and I've missed him every day since. Is she that person? Because life does happen. Edit, thank you for all the kind comments and wishes, and the award. It's been almost 30 years. Always miss him. As bittersweet as it can be, I promise I wouldn't trade the heartache, because it's the best reminder of how blessed I was and continue to be. To all of you, find someone who loves you that deeply. There is no fancy wedding or car or house that means anything more, will keep you warm at night, or hold you at your worst. Settle on that kind of love. And back up to the post that OP wrote, Edit, Holy shit, I did not expect so many responses. Thank you everyone for your advice and kind words. I will talk to Jay sometime over the weekend. I think she picked up that something was up. I didn't call her from work like I usually do, and the last couple of nights I made an excuse that I was beat and went to bed pretty early. I'll try to read as many replies and provide more information, but I wanted to clarify a couple of things. Regardless of how shitty I feel, I didn't like people calling Jay nasty names. It's partly my fault. I didn't give enough detail. Before quitting, she had a decent enough job. She's not good at managing money at all, but she would buy stuff for the house or gifts for me on special occasions. I never thought of her as a gold digger. She talked to me about quitting and trying to be a real estate agent. She told me she liked the freedom of the profession, and I tried to be supportive. Secondly, I don't think I misunderstood her meaning. Maybe she didn't mean it as a negative, but the messages were crystal clear. She settled for me. Update 
Hi everyone. Thank you to everyone for your advice and kind words. Here is the update. I talked to Jay. I told her how I overheard her talking, how she is settling for me. I told her how that felt and what kind of mood I was in after. She had tears rolling down her face as I was telling her how I felt. She didn't say anything for a bit. She then just said, I'm sorry. It was true when we started dating. She just heard from mutual friends that I was great and she thought that she would give me a chance. She said that in the beginning it was about feeling safe and feeling like she could be supported and loved. In the beginning, it was just being with someone who had their shit together and would be good for her. Eventually, she fell in love. She loved me dearly. This didn't make me feel better. I then told her about the text messages. This is when she got angry. I was an asshole for going through her messages. Violation of privacy, betrayal of trust. How dare I? I didn't set out to get her password. She's just extremely careless with it. She hits remember password on everything. When she types it out, she hits show password first. If you happen to be glancing at the screen, you'd know what it was. That is how I found out. I've never thought to use it until that day. Eventually, after going on about reading her messages, she stopped and was sobbing for a minute. Finally, she just goes, what do you want me to say? I can't help how I feel. I wasn't the type that she'd go for before. She's still attracted to those types of guys. She's just older now and knows better. That is why she's settled with me. She loves me and wants to spend the rest of her life with me. That doesn't work for me. I told her we had different ideas about what a relationship, especially marriage, were. The trust is broken for the both of us. I went through her messages and it confirmed that she did settle for me even though I'm not her type. This is where we go our separate ways. We agreed eventually that she stay with one of her friends. I'll move all of her stuff to the spare bedroom. When she finds a place, I'll help her move. She can keep the car. I was just being an asshole about leaving her destitute. She was crying from the moment that we started talking to the moment we went into separate rooms. It wasn't easy seeing her like that. I wanted to go to her and hold her, but it had been done. When I closed the door to my room, that's when all the emotions washed over me. I was bawling the whole time. The sheets still smelled like her, and I either couldn't or didn't want to change them just then. I feel shitty and I won't be okay for a while. But I am pretty certain that I did the right thing. I read a lot of comments on the old post and it shocked me. Truly, I was a little taken aback with how many comments I saw from women that say they did the same thing. They settled for their current significant other after going through a bunch of guys that were more their type. To me, that's super effed. Like, if your partner knows you and you're both cool with it, fine, I guess. Live your life. But to me, that's gross. If you settle with your significant other for safety, comfort, financial calculus, that's what an arranged marriage is. You want the benefits of an arranged marriage without any of the obligations of one. If you can pull it off, like, more power to you, but that's not something that interests me at all. I also read a whole bunch of get an ironclad prenup. I understand the thinking, but I don't want to do that. Maybe I'm too quixotic and old-fashioned, but starting a lifelong commitment with a plan on how to end it doesn't seem right. I guess it's something that I'll have to pay attention to more going forward. Thank you again, everyone. If there are any updates to be had, I'll post again, but that's it. In the comments, RegularSwitch454 says, Can she afford to keep the car? And OK Zombie replies, No. And OP will either have to continue paying for the car or have his credit score tank. Personally, I think he needs to return the car to the dealer and let Sis find her own transportation. You co-signed for the car, so your name is still on it. If you let her keep the car and she causes a really bad accident that is over insurance limits, you might get sued. That will put your home and business at risk. Have her refinance the car so it's completely in her name only. If she can't get a loan, sell it so that she can buy a car for cash. Don't put yourself at risk. Well, she probably can't though. That's why it's in his name. Storm Feathery says, Even aside from the suspicious, Hey, uh, suddenly every woman is a gold digger who is settling, thing happening. Man, does the whole romantic plot of so many books and movies have a lot of shit to answer for? 
Guy meets girl, they fall madly in love and maybe there are misunderstandings or obstacles, but it comes right in the end because it is true love and they are meant to be. Real life ain't like that. Oh, I guess it can happen and that's great for those people, but some people think they found their true love and marry too young or quickly and stay too long. Other relationships, the couple falls in love more slowly and may never even have that huge passion, but are just quietly happy together. And that's just fine. Jolie Brunette says, I'm always thankful for my partner and our marriage. But wow, this made me so stupid thankful that I was one of the lucky ones. We've been through countless and very hard obstacles in the first 10 years, but damn, life is good even when you can't afford many extracurriculars or vacations for your kids. Being old-fashioned is definitely not marrying for love, Lamau. Right? Marriage up until the late 70s, early 80s was largely a financial union. Women couldn't get their own bank accounts, credit cards, sign leases, or get mortgages on their own. Women having a job that they could 100% support themselves on is also new, in the overall scheme of things. So the idea that you 100% marry for love is absolutely a modern thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, he went kinda hard bashing the general public there, like, damn, let people divorce if they want to, OP, Jesus. I understand that you and your partner didn't work out, but that is no excuse to come swinging from the gates. What do we do? We're just bystanders, man. <laughs> like, damn, isn't it so crazy that you end up with someone that isn't completely your type, but you're compatible with them, and you can see the both of you just sticking it out and being a married couple? Ah yes, that's just an arranged marriage right there, but without the arranged marriage obligations. Very interesting take, I can see where he's coming from, but I don't particularly agree with it. Anyways, good on you OP for getting out of there, that obviously wasn't a relationship that was healthy for either of you, and I'm happy that you've made the best decision for yourself. Our next post is by user Rhode Island 123 titled, Am I the asshole for walking out of the airport when I saw my husband's mum standing there with her luggage? I, female 30, don't have the best relationship with my husband's mum. Since day one, she tried to make remarks and compare me to her. She then tried to get on my good side and started overly praising everything I do and sometimes even copying me like that one time when she literally dyed her hair purple just like mine and when everyone pointed out how ridiculous she looked, she actually blamed me and accused me of trying to make a joke out of her. So anyways, my husband and I took two weeks off work to go visit some places out of the country, tourism in other words. Thing is, I was the one who saved up for and arranged for the trip. My husband was responsible for booking the tickets. My husband's mum wanted to come along and threw temper tantrums when I said no. She called, texted, sent people to talk to me into letting her come, and even threatened to call the police and make some complaint to get us to stay if she can't come. My husband said that we should just take her, but I told him that he was wrong to tell her about the trip in the first place. He gave me an ultimatum, said he wouldn't go if she can't come, and I told him I'd gladly call his bluff, which made him take his words back and say, fine, I will tell her to stop it because we won't take her. Things then got quieter, suspiciously quieter. The day of the trip came, and we got to the airport at 2pm. My husband was walking ahead of me and was looking left and right like he was looking for someone. I asked him, but he didn't respond. He led me to the waiting area and the first thing I saw was his mum standing there with her luggage. I froze in my spot. I felt a cold wave washing over me and I was fuming inside. She and my husband were hugging and that's when I quietly turned around and started walking towards the exit. My husband followed me while shouting at me to stop. He tried to stop me but I told him off in the harshest way possible. He tried to say that I was overreacting and that his mum was there anyway and I should let it go and not mess the trip up for us. I told him that he and his mum could still go and that I was going home. I went home and sobbed into my dog's fur for several minutes. It turns out he booked her a ticket without me knowing. An hour later, he came home yelling and raging about how pathetic and spiteful I was to walk out and go home and ruin the trip last minute. I told him he caused this to happen. He said that I was being so hard on his mum, it's ridiculous. I refused to fight anymore, but he kept on berating me, then called my family to tell them that the trip was cancelled and that it was because of me. 
My family said that I shouldn't have ruined it for myself and should have just sucked it up and done my best to enjoy. Did I really overreact? In the comments, Peanut Butter Toast says, I don't want to call the divorce card, but divorce. You told your boundaries, you said no, she crossed it. Your husband told you he would tell her no, he lied. He tried to pin you in a corner by not saying anything and bringing her anyways, and then got upset that you refused to be a part of his little trap, and then to berate you? He is not a good man. He needs to go. Not the asshole. OP replies, correct. I did say no, and in the nicest way, but she was having none of it. Seeing my husband giving into her tantrums made me feel weaker, but I still kept trying to hold that boundary even after he himself said he wouldn't unless she goes. It was stressful and very exhausting, and I really considered cancelling way earlier, but tried harder because I really wanted this trip. He chose his mother over you. It will never get better. Time to get a lawyer. And a big F you to anyone who told you to suck it up and make the best of it. This right here. I would divorce his ass. He lacks a backbone and the ability to stand by your side. Time to cut your losses and move on. OP replies, it really felt like he did, which hurt me beyond measures, but he constantly tells me that things aren't how I see them and that I should really give his mum a chance and open my heart to her. He did. He did choose his mother over you. I feel like you need to acknowledge that in writing because you seem to be dancing around what people are saying in your responses. Not the asshole. He gave you an ultimatum. No loving partner would ever put you in that position. He's a mummy's boy, and she's manipulative and toxic. You have every right to enjoy a holiday with your husband without them behaving like children. You did the right thing. The next right thing to do is leave. He doesn't respect you. OP replies, I didn't know he'd really take it this far and actually give an ultimatum. That shook me, and I'm not gonna lie, from the moment he gave this ultimatum, I really wanted to cancel. Cancel your marriage. It's a sham. He is already with another woman. His mother is his number one girl. Not the asshole. Hubby lied to you and put his mother before you? I'd be looking to get out of that marriage. That would be a deal breaker for me. OP replies, the thing is, he didn't even pay for anything, and I really wanted us to have some special time together as a couple, and was really looking forward to having this trip. So much that I worked more hours to be able to save for it. You're not the asshole, but your family is right. You should have went. You paid for everything. Your name is on everything. You could have easily went and enjoyed your two-week vacation yourself while not letting them into your hotel rooms and not using your accommodations. Honestly, I'm with pretty much everyone I feel like here, OP, in saying that this marriage seems well and truly over. He really did screw you over hard with this. Thank God you've played hardball with her and just kept her at such a distance this entire time that you've been married to this guy, but imagine if you did give in in this instance, how much further she would push it going into the future. That's not someone you want to be attached to. I applaud you for walking out of the airport and cutting your losses right there. It sucks to lose a holiday that you were supposed to enjoy, but maybe his stupid games and ultimatum is the final eye-opener that you need, OP. My judgement is not the asshole. Update. Hello. I don't know where to begin. It's been an absolute nightmare recently, and I feel like I was losing my sanity. So for more details about my situation, I have to admit that my husband's mum favours him over all his siblings. This affected his relationship with them and me as well. He's never seen an issue with how differently his mum treats him. It bothered me and made me feel uncomfortable. The whole dynamic made me feel uncomfortable. Going low contact has never ever been an option. Like, he has to see her or call her every single day. Most of his siblings don't talk to him, and I 100% believe it's because of his mum's favouritism, like I said. He does bear some blame for not seeing how wrong it is till this day. In many instances, I found myself making excuses for his behaviour, even in my post. I did it spontaneously, and I don't know why, but I guess it's because of how much I love him and because I really, really wanted to be able to work things out without letting it affect our marriage. Regarding what happened with the trip, he tried to have a talk with me, and most of what he said came from a place of blame. Blame towards me. I just couldn't continue with the argument. I told him I needed space, and that I would be going to stay with my sister for a while. 
He didn't take it well. He literally got up from the couch and opened the door, telling me to go right ahead. In that moment, and seeing how he was still not even anywhere near understanding what he has done, just made things perfectly clear to me. I just had pictured years and years of my life being lived like that, and I was like, no, I can't do it. I can't take any more of it, especially when he keeps focusing on being right every time. His mum can do no wrong. I'm always the aggressive, crazy, jealous, pathetic overreactor. All of these people's opinions, advice, and concerns were like a spark, like the wake-up call I really needed. Though I wish it didn't get this far, but what's done is done. Right now, I'm staying with my sister. I brought my dog with me as well. He sent me his last message, telling me that I'm choosing to end what we had together, but I believe it's the other way around, especially with how he keeps making his mum the victim in this situation. It's become clear now that we keep going in circles with no end in reach, and I'm just so exhausted and overwhelmed. I'm not mad at him and don't expect him to change, but at least I'm given options to decide what's best for me and my future, even if it's separation and divorce. A big thank you to those who reached out with resources I feel very, very lucky to have come across. I just wanted to give you an update since many of you asked for it. In the comments, Cadmium2093 says, I'm sorry you were going through this, but I'm also so very, very, very proud of you. You were standing up for yourself, putting yourself first, looking into the future, and making sure that it will be what you want it to be. I wish you the best of luck. Give the doggo the biggest of hugs and lots of pets. Quote, he sent me his last message telling me I'm the one choosing to end what we had together. Maybe if he says this enough times to himself, he'll actually start to believe it. I actually think he knows this is all on him, but he's too weak to do anything about it and is desperate to deflect the blame. I'm petty, so I just tell him to let me know where he and his mummy are registered as I'd love to send them a wedding gift. The sad truth OP needs to accept is that he got the woman he cares about. That was my first thought. I've been in this position, loving someone who doesn't want to return it, nor even values it. It hurts so bad when you realize the truth, but you're better off in the long run. I always find it so strange that people act ridiculous, difficult, controlling, rude, uncompromising, stonewalling, etc., and they say, well, it's your doing. You're the one leaving. God, my ex during our breakup said, I decided our relationship was worth it, but you're deciding to walk away. And it still makes me so mad because like, no shit, dude. You're the one that said and did some really effing hurtful stuff. No shit, I'm the one walking away. You don't get to be proud of yourself for staying and sorry for yourself and acting like I'm the one wrong for leaving when you're the one that effed up. Just um, felt like some of these comments might hit home with some people, but uh, I absolutely agree with it. Some people are just too damn good at gaslighting, aren't they? But yeah, I'm just so happy that OP's ex managed to stick with the love of his life in his mother. I do hope that those two have the day they deserve. In fact, maybe the life they deserve, because it really sounds like it's going somewhere. Not sure where, but somewhere, that's for sure. And honestly, congratulations to you, OP, for losing all that dead weight. Thank God you're out of there. I told my brother that I wouldn't attend his wedding. Me, 25 male, and my brother, 28 male, have never had a good relationship, and it's only gotten worse after I came out as gay. Luckily, our relationship has gotten a bit better over the last two years. In those two years, he met his fiance. Her and I never got along because she doesn't like gay people. In her mind, we are sick. I had an argument with her once and she told me that I needed help because in her words, I am sick in the head and need professional help. It's not the only thing she's done and said to me, but I don't want to get into details. So my brother came to visit a couple of days ago. It was a surprise since he doesn't visit often. I let him in and we started talking. He told me he was getting married and I congratulated him. We talked for a while longer and he tells me that he has to tell me something. I asked him what was wrong and he tells me that he wants me to attend his wedding without my husband and instead bring a girl. I asked him why I can't attend with my husband and he tells me that it's how his fiance wants it and that I should accept it since it would be only for one day. 
We got into an argument, and I told him that he just shouldn't expect me to attend since I wouldn't be there. After I said this, he told me that I'm an asshole and accused me of not wanting him to be happy. He left, and a couple hours later, my mum called me. She asked what was wrong because my brother told her that we had a fight. I told her what happened, and she told me that she would like to see me attend his wedding, but that she understands if I don't. My father, on the other hand, messaged me telling me that I'm an asshole for hurting my brother's feelings, but his reactions are nothing new. Honestly, I do want to attend his wedding because he's my brother and I love him, but as things stand, I will not go. Sorry if it's a bit long. Thank you for your time and have a nice day. In the comments, Milky Coconut says, Honestly, you shouldn't go. Your brother refuses to leave a woman who is disrespectful towards his family, aka you. Your relationship might have improved, but honestly, I don't feel like it's enough. Now wanting you to come where you know his wife doesn't accept you and he doesn't try to defend you, even if I understand that he is kind of homophobic, it's another thing. And even have the nerves to ask you to pretend to have a girl? You're married with your husband for God's sake. It's not like he's just your boyfriend. Even there I think it's problematic. That's not normal that you're being asked to deny your sexuality to attend a wedding. OP replies, I want to be there for him, but I don't think it's worth it. Like I said in the post, his fiance has done and said a lot of stuff to me and he only defended me once. I get we don't have the best relationship, but it hurts that he thinks so little of me. Him asking me to bring a girl instead of my husband really hurts, not just myself, but my husband too. It especially hurts since we invited his fiance to our wedding even though she doesn't like us. My brother doesn't like that I'm gay. He accepts it to a point, but I never thought that he'd act like that. It just hurts. Ask him to come to your birthday, wedding anniversary, or something, but bring a man instead of his wife. See if that gets the point through. Not the asshole. This is the level of petty that I aspire to be. Sorry bro, if you can't fake being gay for a day, you can't be a part of my life events either. Leave wifey at home, it's a gays only event. Unless she wants to bring another woman and stay away from you the whole time, then we're cool. Taco Bell says, you are not an object to look pretty in pictures. You're a human being, and asking you to come as anything but yourself is dehumanizing. I'm sorry this happened to you, and I hope you find a delightful chosen family. What a horrible thing for sister-in-law to ask. Stay home with the ones who love you. OP replies, it really hurts to hear that she wants it that way. No matter what she has done, I never thought she would be like this. I'm so sorry, OP. Our daughter is gay, and I can't wait to meet her darling girlfriend. Love is precious. All the best. Your family sounds pretty awful. I'm sorry you have to deal with so many bigots in your life. I would 100% not be going to the wedding. And OP replies, My mother isn't all that bad after her and my dad got divorced. My sister is the only one that I truly feel like she cares about me. My father is just... Well, he's even worse than my brother. I can see why you maintain contact with your brother after all this time, but it doesn't feel like you should, you know? It's very obvious that he doesn't support your sexuality, and he's offering no pushback on his wife on his wedding day against her bigoted views. He's complicit in this, he's absolutely cool with discriminating against your sexuality, and he's pretty much forcing you to accept that. Those are not the actions and words of someone that's supposed to love you, that's supposed to be close to you and care for you. If this brother of yours weren't a spineless coward, then he'd tell his wife to piss off and let you bring your husband to the wedding, but he's obviously complicit. Update. I want to thank you all for your kind messages. I couldn't reply to them all, but I've read them all. You guys are really kind. Thank you. So I honestly didn't think about posting an update, especially so soon, but something happened today so I thought that it would be right to post about it. After I made my post, my husband and I had a talk, and to keep it short, he told me that I could go if I really wanted to, but I told him that I didn't want to without him, so that's that. Now for what happened. Early this morning, I woke up to a lot of texts from family and even friends. They've been messaging me a lot after it all happened. I looked through most of them, but I decided not to reply since most of them were bad. So the morning goes pretty good and me and my husband leave at 11 because we were going to watch his nephew's soccer game, he lost, 
and after the game was over, we just left and had some fun. An hour after we got home, my sister called me. I picked up and she told me she and our brother had a fight over what had happened. When I asked what happened, she told me that she asked him why I can't bring my husband, and he straight up told her it's because he is ashamed of me. After he said this, they got into a huge fight, and she told him that she wouldn't attend either. We talked for a little bit longer, and we promised to meet up in a couple of days to spend some time together. I'll admit that when I hung up, I started crying. I always thought that my brother at least had a little bit of love for me, but I was wrong. I'm honestly planning on cutting him out of my life, and if he ever wants to be back in my life, then he has to show me he deserves it. I'm honestly a mess. I just want all this crap to stop. I hope he has a good wedding and that he'll be happy, but I'm done. In the comments, Azile96 says, What a shitty thing to say. I'm glad your sister stood up for you. I hope your brother changes his mind. I hope you and your husband have a great time together on that day. Make it count. The Reaper Prez says, Cut them all out. If your family can't love you for who they are, then they are not family at all. You're awesome and deserve love, respect, and happiness. I don't have the entire family history here, but it sounds like a few members of your family look down on you because of who you love, and no one needs that in their life. I hope your husband's family is more loving and accepting of you guys. There is no reason your brother couldn't swallow his homophobia if he really loves you, but as you said, he's ashamed. Sounds like he's only pissed because his bride isn't getting the picture-perfect wedding that she wants. OP might have thought that his relationship with his brother improved before the wedding, but to me, it's clear that the brother just learned to keep his opinions to himself. He never actually grew to respect OP. Facts. He just stopped showing it. Not that he's no longer homophobic. Oh, he was showing it. Plenty. By getting engaged and then married to a person who openly told OP that he was sick in the head for being gay. If he's so ashamed of his brother, why does he want OP there so badly? Just hire a stunt double if the main concern is just having someone who looks like they could be a sibling there. I would never even think to ask the gay people in my life to not bring their partners around. Like, wouldn't even cross my mind. And then to double down and ask them to bring a beard instead? It's ridiculous. Who someone loves and what they do in their bedroom is nobody else's business. All forms of discrimination are obviously bad, but I find it fascinating read infuriating, that homophobia often gets a large pass as just a different opinion. We really don't see that excuse brought up for other forms of discrimination. Yeah, no, honestly, it's good that the cat is out of the bag here, but I can't imagine feeling great if you're OP in this situation. I'd probably break down too if I were them. I do hope that this is the wake-up call that OP needs in order to cut his brother out of his life because... He obviously hates him, he's ashamed of him, it's not going to change. He's just using his wife to communicate the hateful feelings that he feels and that his wife is more than happy to be open with. Please, OP, cut these people out of your life, they are more harm than good. Our next post is by user throwaway3733339, titled... My girlfriend just gave birth to our first child. I know I'm not the biological father, and I revealed I knew as soon as she gave birth. I'll try to keep this short, because I'm planning to go to a bar soon. I found out when she was about six months along. The guy, Brian, approached me at my work, and said, Are you Sarah's boyfriend? I said yeah, and asked what he wanted. He said he was sorry that he had slept with her, and swore he didn't know that she was with someone. I don't believe that. He then pulled out his phone to show the texts between them. They had been sleeping together or linking up for at least a year. Then she found out she was pregnant and they came to an agreement to just pretend the baby was mine. In return, she wouldn't lose her perfect life and he wouldn't be responsible for a baby. I knew it was weird. We had been having problems trying for a baby and all of a sudden she got pregnant so easily. But he explained that he had been thinking about it and he recently became a Christian. He said that he couldn't live his life knowing that I was living a lie while his child didn't know their real father. So yeah, I told him I'd keep in touch and to not say that he said anything just yet. I've had a lot of time to think, but ultimately I decided to wait until she gave birth. To hurt her in her most vulnerable moment. I'll spare the details. But she went into labor, baby was born, and was taken to the NICU to be monitored for a bit. 
What should have been a beautiful moment of me holding my baby was the most heartbreaking time of my life. Just knowing he was not mine hurt me. Once she was sewn up and comfortable, I started packing up my stuff to leave. She asked where I was going, and I just told her. I know I'm not the baby's father. You can act all shocked, but I know. Just ask Brian to come. I'm certain he'll sign the birth certificate. And then I left. She's been calling my phone over and over, even sending texts as I type this, and has even gotten her sister to call me a few times. It was hard pretending these last few months, but I think I'm satisfied. I feel really, really heartbroken though. I was planning to propose to her on the day our baby was born. I was going to make her the happiest woman ever. Oh well, I'm going to get shitfaced now. In the comments, Kirito390 says, Get a DNA test just to be 100% sure the child isn't yours, but you did the right thing leaving her. Make sure that you have the text from Brian so she can't twist the narrative. Edit to add, you also need the DNA test so she can't put you on child support, because if you're in the USA, it'll be hell to get you off it once the court deems you the father. OP replies, I'm like 110% sure that's not my kid just from looking at him, but I'll get the test. I get that, but it's just to be on the safe side. You wouldn't want to find out 10 years later that it's yours, and you missed out on all the time and moments with the child. It won't hurt having something definitive that says you aren't the father. I plotted revenge against my ex-husband when I found out he was cheating on me when I was pregnant with our son. It felt good in the moment to stick it to him by telling the husband of his mistress what went on, but I was still miserable. It's been three years, and I'm still in therapy for what he did. Best of luck, OP. I hope you get therapy too. Everyman1000 asks, How exactly did you get revenge? And they reply, I told the husband on his mistress that his wife was cheating on him. I made a viral video about it on TikTok, so it got back to his family. He's in the military, so he also got kicked out of base housing after I left with our kids. Back up to the post, there is a small update. Head hurts, but I'm home and safe. I wasn't really expecting this to gain as much traction as it did, but I'll clear up a few things. Brian is going to be in the baby's life if it's his. I don't care what anyone says, I'm sure the kid isn't mine. I'll go get tested, but me and Brian have been in contact since last night, and there isn't any doubt in my mind. For those of you calling me a psychopath or whatever, I don't really care. You'll all forget about this post in a day anyway, while I'll have to live with this shit for the rest of my life. What I did wasn't amazing, but I don't care. All I ever did was treat her amazing, and this is how she pays me back. If you think this is fake, go read something else. It doesn't matter to me. Update. Hi everyone. I just wanted to start by saying I would have updated sooner, but it takes a bit to get the test results back. I've also been working on myself in the time being. Thanks for all the support. I'll cut to the chase. I am not the father, but I already knew that deep down. Brian and the baby are a match, so that pretty much answers the question. He is very excited to be a dad, even despite the circumstances. We've kept in touch this whole time, and he's actually a really great guy goes to church now, volunteers at shelters, etc. I'm not sure if we'll continue to stay in touch after this, but I wouldn't mind getting a drink with him every once in a while. I hope the kid does great in life. He should with Brian as his dad. As for Sarah, around the time that I posted, she had asked Brian to be with her officially since there was nothing to hide. As far as I know, he has not taken her up on that offer and just wants to co-parent for the sake of being in the kid's life. I think that's very smart of him honestly. Me and her have talked as well. We talked about where it all went wrong. She felt as though I wasn't there for her fully, and just felt unfulfilled, which I understand. I wasn't always the best guy, but I treated her the best I could. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. She started crying and I did give her a hug, but I made sure that she knew that it wasn't because I cared about her. She's offered to stay friends, and for me to visit if I want, but I declined. I'm not really interested in keeping up with her and her kid, but I did give her the stuffed animal that I was planning to give our kids someday as a gift. She's been staying with her mum, and has fully moved out her stuff. She asked me to keep her number, but I blocked her the same day that she finished moving out. So it's just me now. I'm not gonna lie, my heart has been super heavy, but I think I'll be okay. There's a cute girl at my work, and we've been talking. She's a single mum, and has been awesome so far. 
I explained that I wanted to go slow because of my recent breakup, and she understands. We've hooked up once or twice, nothing serious yet. I just want to be by myself for now, but I'll likely give her a shot when I'm ready. That's it for now. I'm depressed, but I'm working out now at least. I never want to talk to Sarah and will likely never see her again. It sucks because she is such a big part of my life, but that's gone now. Thanks for all the support. I'll answer questions if you guys have more. Edits. I just wanted to mention that I still don't feel bad about what I did. I can tell she's still hurting, but I definitely think it's deserved still. In the comments, R.I.P. Sunnydale says, Good luck. Just felt I should mention, though, that repeatedly hooking up with a single mum from work is not moving slowly or carefully. If you really want to heal from your last relationship, I'd advise foregoing sex in favour of being single and hanging out with friends. Also, if you're feeling at loose ends, confused, etc., do a nice single mum a favour by being careful not to give any impression that you're developing feelings for her if you're honestly not interested in anything lasting. More people say they can do strictly friends with benefits than can actually do it. And OP replies, Yeah, I definitely don't want to add more drama to her life with her being a mum and everything. I am interested in her, I just want to focus on getting myself in a good spot so I don't drag shit into my next relationship. The sex was her idea mostly. She said she was fine with casual stuff. I'd definitely be honest with her if I completely wanted to stop seeing her or didn't think that it would be good long term. Heretically Ever After says, You handled that all incredibly well. I'm glad you gave us an update because this internet stranger was concerned and rooting for you. Everything meant for you will find you, and you'll be a great partner and parent, if you want, one day. Hang in there. Just to let you know, her excuse for cheating is so BS. If her needs weren't fulfilled, she should have communicated that instead of lying and waiting to find out if she could get away with cheating or not. OP, you handled this so well. I wish you peace in the mind. This. My ex-wife used this same excuse, but she was cheating even before we got married. She was an emotionally abusive woman as well, which caused other issues. Cheating is never an answer. And now, onto the final update, titled, I'm the guy who waited until his partner gave birth before telling her I knew the baby wasn't mine. Here's how my life is going. I keep getting DMs asking me to update, so here's one. It's been roughly eight months. Check profile for original story. No, I don't talk to Sarah. Screw Sarah. Haven't seen her. Last I heard, she moved to three hours away with her mum to be closer to some family. I kept seeing her around town a lot, so I'm beyond grateful that she's gone. She would attempt to have conversations with me sometimes in the first month after she gave birth, but that soon stopped. As for Brian, we text occasionally, and we did go out for that beer. He overall seems happy to be a father, but we don't talk about Sarah. I don't keep up with him much anyways. We are both hardworking men with jobs, kids, and lives to live, so it's kinda hard to keep up. I don't think they're together at all, but who knows? Speaking of kids, the woman who was a single mom that I started seeing? We're still together. Her kid is awesome, and I love being her stepdad, to be honest. So a big middle finger to those who told me to stop talking to her, or that it wasn't gonna work. It may seem like we moved fast, but at this point, I don't care. I have never loved anyone more. We communicate properly, hardly fight, it is just so much fun. I initially was going to cut all contact with her after falling off into a bad drinking habit, but she really kept me grounded. I didn't meet my stepdaughter for a while, but when I did, I knew I couldn't leave. Being a part of this little family has healed me in ways that I literally cannot fathom. And before anyone says that I just used them to deal with the trauma of not having my own kid, that couldn't be farther from the truth. I'm in therapy, I got my shit together, and most days I don't even think about my ex. Hell, I even forgot about this damn account. Words cannot describe how much my life has picked up. Thank you Reddit strangers for being there in my darkest time of my life. Honestly, it helped. Hoping to propose to my girlfriend sometime in the future. That's it, bye. In the comments, Karagator says, Interesting. Big betrayal into immediately moving on with a single mother? You do you, OP. I'm wishing you the best, but damned if I'm not worried for ya. 
You forgot to add the little drinking problem, the cherry on top. Also, the fall from, I was great and treated her amazing, to, I wasn't the best, but I did what I could. Yeah, the, I treated her amazing was a huge red flag. He lost me at the stuffed animal. If your girlfriend is six months pregnant, when he found out about the cheating, I hope you've purchased more than just a stuffed animal to give to the baby someday. Yeah, I don't get this. He went to full pregnancy and either was okay spending money on all the things that you need for a baby, or they bought basically nothing and she was going to be the most unprepared mother in the world. No crib, toys, clothes, diapers, baby monitor, was there even a baby shower? Newborns are not cheap, this just doesn't sit right. He says he's doing great in the updates, but the more he justifies himself, the worse it all sounds. Like yeah, I may have moved on too fast and I'm already a stepfather to this child, it's been 8 months people, and I may have had a drinking problem that my new partner saved me from, but I'm doing great! Great, I say! Yeah, there is something really weird in the tone. She betrayed me and I wanted to hurt her as much as possible in her most vulnerable moment, and I did. Anyway, things are great now. She's a single mom co-parenting with a bio dad, who I've hung out with, and I'm a stepdad. Woohoo! The only glimmer of hope is that he says that he's in therapy. Above all else, let's hope he keeps that up. He says it's impossible he's rebounding or compensating for what he lost, but he calls that kid his stepchild when he's been with her for 8 months. They're not even married. He is not a stepfather. This guy needs more time in therapy. Yeah, I won't lie, I wanted to laugh at a lot of the things that this guy was saying because it's not normal, it doesn't read as normal. I'm sorry if he thinks it does, but it is concerning how fast he's moved here. It really sounds like he's compensating or trying to use this new family of his to mask a lot of the pain that has obviously come up. You don't just have a drinking problem crop up and then be like, yeah, but I, I dealt with that. I sorted it out. A drinking problem is not a fad. It's not something that just happens for a week and then disappears. The vibes are absolutely terrible in this post, and I'm going to echo what everyone else said here. I hope he's getting therapy. I hope he doesn't leave therapy, and I hope the therapy is actually doing a proper job at, you know, pointing out all of the things going wrong with him, because from the outside in, this is a mess. This is so messy. Am I the asshole for telling my fiancé my daughter has to be in our wedding? I, 45 male, have a daughter Polly from a previous relationship. I divorced my ex-wife on good terms, and we share 50-50 custody of Polly. She is now 11. After I divorced my ex-wife, I met my now fiancé, Sharon. Sharon and my daughter got along very well. After five years of my relationship with Sharon, I proposed. Sharon was super excited and wanted to start planning right away. She looked at venues and started asking her friends to be her bridesmaids. She then told me that she wanted her niece to be a flower girl, which I had no problems with, but I said I also wanted Polly to be a flower girl. Sharon looked at me funny and then said that she didn't think that Polly would fit the part. I got angry and told Sharon that my daughter would be in our wedding. Sharon started to become upset and said that the girls in the wedding were up to her and Polly wouldn't be one of them. I told Sharon that if Polly wasn't in the wedding, then there might not be a wedding. I stormed out and took Polly to get ice cream. Polly knows we're getting married and told me she thinks she will look pretty in whatever dress Sharon decides that she should wear. This broke my heart and I decided to text Sharon. I told her that I would be staying at a friend's to think this over. My mother-in-law texted me saying I'm overreacting and that my daughter doesn't have to be in my wedding and I was an ass for saying that I would cancel. So, did I take it too far saying that I would cancel? Am I overreacting or just being a good dad? In the comments, OP answers some questions. Did you propose alternatives to the flower girl position? OP says, I said I wanted her in the wedding in some shape or form. I wanted her to be a part of our day and not sitting with the guests while we walk down the aisle. Fiancé said that it would be best if she just sat with my parents. Many have suggested a junior bridesmaid, but my fiancé still declines. 
I did tell my fiance that she will be in the wedding, and if that means that she has to be a groomsman, then so be it. Fiance blew up saying she's not a boy, and my side is only for boys. She denied my request to have a father-daughter dance with Polly, so this is why I'm rethinking the whole wedding. Sharon and I are going to talk tonight, and hopefully she will give me full reasoning. Someone else asks, has Polly ever said anything about Sharon treating her poorly? OP says, Polly has never voiced any concerns about Sharon treating her badly. I have never seen anything happen between them, so this was very out of the blue. Surprisingly, Sharon has never had an issue with Polly until the wedding talk. The two have always been super close, so her reaction shocked me for sure. I would have never popped the question if Polly wasn't comfortable. I totally understand where you're coming from. I do think it's crazy that I haven't seen any signs. I've talked to Polly and told her to tell me if anything has ever happened. Polly can't recall a single time Sharon was mean to her. Someone else asks, could race, weight, or disability be a factor in this? And OP says, yes, I made this post late last night and am just now reading all the comments. My daughter is not disabled. She is on the average weight scale for an 11 year old and all of us in the situation are white. 10x10 Hag says, This is a big red flag. If she doesn't want to include her stepdaughter in her wedding, then don't expect she'll include your daughter in her life. She seems a little odd to think that your daughter shouldn't take part in this important life event. It's so weird that she doesn't want her future stepdaughter to be in this wedding, because if OP and S are getting married and becoming one family, the daughter is part of the family. As a future stepmother, Sharon should honestly want to include her, not exclude her. Is her treatment of OP's daughter going to change? Is she going to start looking for ways to exclude her? Big red flag. What seems even more insidious about this is that he's been dating this woman for five years, since his daughter was six years old. Sharon's known Polly for nearly half of her life already, and now they're getting married, it's like she can start over, and Polly can just go live with mum, I guess? I would cancel the wedding and make plans to leave the relationship. Muppet John Bon Jovi says, not the asshole. Props to you for standing up to your daughter. That's exactly what a good dad should do. Your fiance is trying to diminish your daughter's role in your wedding. I'd be concerned that that'll carry over to other parts of your life too. Whatever bullshit she means by her not fitting the part sends up huge red flags to me too. I have kids and this would be a deal breaker for me. Not the asshole. Be careful. Sharon just showed her true feelings for Polly. You want the people who mean the most in your wedding. The fact that your fiancé, who I'm guessing is younger than you and will be her first marriage, doesn't think your daughter fits that description is extremely telling to me. Even if Sharon gives in, you have now seen where your daughter rates in her potential stepmother's life. If you choose to ignore this, it won't be the last time your daughter is left on the outside looking in. And back to OP, there was a small update in the comments posted that same day. I talked to her mum this morning because I wanted Polly to stay with her until this was figured out. Her mum said she hopes it goes well and told me that I could stay with her and Polly if need be. She says Polly always comes home with nothing negative to say, so we aren't sure where this came from. Yeah, not the asshole for this one either. It just seems so insane to me that this has all come up so suddenly and she's like, no... Polly can't feature any part at all in this wedding. No father-daughter dance, no bridesmaid, no flower girl, no groomsman. Just don't even let her be at the wedding at this point. It's really frustrating to me as well because we're not getting the real reason for why she's not invited to the wedding and why Sharon doesn't want her to be a part of it. The ones that I can dig up so far are the girls in the wedding were up to her and Polly wouldn't be one of them. Mother-in-law saying that you're overreacting and your daughter doesn't have to be in the wedding and that you're an asshole for saying that you'd cancel it. And fiancé saying it would be best if she just sat with your parents. Like, Sharon, just say that you hate her already. Why have you had this mask on for five years and why are you marrying this guy if you absolutely hate his daughter? I'm just so baffled as to why you would date someone for that long and commit to them when you've, like, helped raise their kid from the age of six? It honestly just baffles my mind, and I'm very much looking forward to finding out why. Update. Hey Reddit, thanks everyone for all the kind words and suggestions. 
To answer a few questions, my daughter is not disabled, chubby, or having an awkward phase, like braces or glasses. I did ask if Penny could be a groomsman, but Sharon immediately shot me down. Sharon is 39, she is the same race as my daughter, this is her first marriage, I tried to answer as many comments as possible. I came home to talk to Sharon today. When I pulled in our driveway, my mother-in-law was sitting there in her car. I got out and went inside, trying to avoid talking to mother-in-law. Sharon was sitting at the kitchen table, and I joined her. She sat in silence, so I asked her the first question. Why does Polly not fit the part, and why don't you want her in the wedding at all? Her answer full-on shocked me. She quietly said, I was hoping that after the wedding, you could become a holiday visit only dad. I didn't want her in the wedding so she wouldn't be in the photos around the house since she wasn't going to be around much. I kept my cool, calmly took her hand, and pulled my engagement ring off. Her eyes started to tear up. She said we shouldn't end the marriage over this and that she can change. I told her the damage was already done. I told her I wanted her things moved out by next week and that she could come get them when my daughter wasn't home. The house is in my name and I paid for it. I was allowing her to get her furniture that she paid for. She stormed out and mother-in-law came knocking on the door saying that I was being unreasonable. I couldn't imagine only seeing my daughter three or four times a year. The fact that Sharon wanted me to give up part of my custody blew me away. I'm sitting on my couch just in shock. Our honeymoon was supposed to be in Hawaii. Looks like me and Polly will be going instead. I will update again if anything happens. In the comments, Pariah164 says, Holy shit. First things first, you're an amazing father. Good on you for having Polly's back. Second, your ex-fiancé is an absolute witch. Like, how big is her bag? It must be massive to hold all that audacity. She really wanted to take your daughter out of your life and replace her with whatever family you two decided to have. You did well by keeping calm, because my anger issues could never. Third, I know it hurts and you're likely in shock, but know that you did the right thing. Surround yourself and Polly with people who love and support you, and take comfort in the fact that you dodged a massive bullet. Frick, that made me realize, now he's going to have to figure out how to have this conversation with his daughter. What would you even tell your kid after that? It sounded like his daughter really looked up to her too. I'm sure this will be crushing for her too. Mouse Attack replies to that, I found out that my fiancé isn't as loving as I thought she was. I believe I can do better, and even if I can't, I know that I don't want to be with someone who misrepresented who they are. For right now, I'm going to be single and do some focused thinking about what I want in a partner for me and a stepmom for you. Better response than I would have concocted. I would have just been straight up about it and be like, honesty is the best policy, honey. She played us for five years. It is what it is. Probably for the best that I'm not a parent yet. Mama Lama says, I love this response. They were both bamboozled and saying so is just facts. If daughter pushes it, I'd only go so far to say that the more they talked about joining their families, the more he realized they had very different approaches to parenting, and ultimately, Sharon didn't measure up to what Polly and Dad deserve or need. How are these people so good at this? And now on to our final update, titled, Small Update. Hello everyone, thank you for all the kind comments and suggestions for Hawaii. We arrived a few days ago, and Polly is already having a ton of fun. If you have any cool suggestions, please drop them in the comments. As for my ex-fiancé, she has tried to reach out to me wanting to work everything out, saying she only did it because her mum wanted pure grandchildren. Ew. I still do not care. If she really loved my daughter and I, she wouldn't have acted on her mother's wishes. Sharon has called my workplace to try and get in touch with me. She's even shown up a few times to try and talk to me, and I've told my supervisor to just ask her to leave. She has gone as far as messaging my ex-wife a few times, wanting to know why her calls won't go through to me. When she caught wind that we were in Hawaii, she was pissed. I'm still close with her brother, and he told me that her and her mum were going to try and get plane tickets. If that's the case, I will likely file a restraining order. Polly has asked what happened to Sharon, and I told her that we come as a package deal, and Sharon only wanted me, and I couldn't leave her. Polly understood, but I think that she was a little bit heartbroken. 
I know this update is small, but it's all I have for those asking. In the comments, someone asks, Did your former future brother-in-law have any light to shed on Sharon and his mum's behaviour? And OP says, Her and her brother are not very close and grew up in different homes as my ex-mother-in-law and father-in-law are divorced. Her brother and dad are pretty awesome though. We went and had drinks a few days after the storm of Sharon and her mum. Forever Overthinking says, I'm shocked, shocked to hear that mother-in-law is divorced. I just cannot imagine someone so thoughtful and sane having trouble in her own marriage. Quote, she only did it because her mom wanted pure grandchildren. Imagine admitting this publicly, thinking that it would be a good excuse. Also, imagine just assuming that the mere existence of a stepchild means pure children won't happen. It's not like oodles of kids have half-siblings. OP dodged a frickin' bullet, all because fiancé couldn't wait until after the wedding. And she even complained about the pictures of Polly. Like, ma'am, if Polly is away more, this man clearly loves his child so much that there would be more pictures. She had zero insight into the person that she was going to marry. How do people manage that? Hot Fries says, My mom met my dad after divorcing her first husband and having a kid. My dad immediately liked my older brother, who I think was like two or three, and had no problem accepting him as his own kid. His parents considered my brother as their grandson, and dad's siblings referred to my brother as my dad's son. My brother considers my dad his dad, and his sons all consider my dad to be their grandpa. I'm a nitty, it replies. Same in my family. My dad adopted my brother, and it was never brought up by anyone that he is not his biologically. Not by my dad, not by his family. I found out when I was a teenager, but only because I found a letter when my brother had a different last name, pre-adoption, and asked questions. My dad's not the greatest, and has many, many faults, but this is something I love about him. OP is a great dad. He's strong and amazing on not taking any nonsense from Sharon and her mother-in-law and being supportive for his child. If I was marrying someone who wanted me to throw away my own kid, I'd take the trash out quickly. I hope OP and Polly no longer need to deal with those people. What kind of woman really wants to marry a man that would abandon his kids on a whim for his new wife anyway? Likely the kind of woman who also is the affair partner and breaks up a marriage and is shocked when she gets cheated on too. Her behavior is deplorable, and I'm so glad he dumped her so quickly. If she didn't want to raise stepkids, only date men with no kids. Her excuse of her mom being at fault is flimsy as hell too. For someone pinning the blame on her mom, she seems to have learned nothing from getting dumped if mom is going to be her plus one on gate crashing his vacation. It just makes me feel like a bad Lifetime movie where a series of accidents befalls Opie's family, mysteriously leaving him with no family or obligations but herself. I hope that Opie and his daughter find a good woman for his next try at a relationship. Yeah, honestly, I don't think we need any more updates after that. Like, it would be lovely to know what happened on the Hawaii vacation, but Jesus, this is so nasty. Like, just be for real. Don't even hide behind your mother-in-law's disgusting excuse. How, how does anyone justify saying that to their partner? That is so icky. Like, Sharon, it's so obvious you're lying, and you don't want to say the real reason is that you just have hated Polly this whole time. I don't know how she justifies in her head that telling OP that the grandmother wanted pure grandkids was the go. How do you justify that? OP is so much better off not marrying this woman. Ew. I'm saying it. Sharon is a twisted freak. Yuck. X reaching out after 10 years. I'm at a loss for what to answer with. Throwaway account, because this needs to stay secret for now. I, call me Anthony, 32 years old, have been with my current girlfriend, call her Michelle, 33 years old, for four years. No plans of marriage, and one time she cheated on me. Drunk, mistake, blah blah blah. Whatever, I forgave her. We are pretty much best friends that do everything together and live together. Other than the one instance of cheating, we have no major issues and live a pretty good life. She does not want marriage or kids, I do though. It's a hard no for her. Recently, my ex, call her Nicole, 32 years old, contacted me over a promise we made back when we broke up. 
when and if we were both not married by 32, we would find a way to be together. Some backstory on her and I? Childhood friends, started dating in middle school, dated through high school. She was accepted to her dream college and so was I, on opposite end of the country. Virginia Tech for her and Stanford for me. We did long term for two years until deciding to let each other live their life and be more connected to maybe someone closer if it was going to happen. This was a mutual decision and we broke up contact at that point so that we could move on. Her parents still talk to me on occasion, as they live 4 hours away, and same with the sister, 20 minutes away, and her grandparents, 2 hours away, but never about her per my request. So flash forward, I've been getting calls from a weird number once every month since September, and just didn't answer because I don't answer numbers I don't know. I figure if it's important, they would leave a message. X's sister comes by and says, hey, this is from Nicole. She said you can read it and respond if you want, and if not, she will understand soon enough. For the life of me, I had forgotten our weird promise, but the letter goes as this. Hey Anthony, I know neither of us have been in contact in the last 10 years, but I'm asking if you still remember the promise that we made. I have no right to ask of it, and if you have moved on, then it's okay, as I want you to be happy. First and foremost, I want you to know that this isn't a desperation attempt, because I'm lonely. My sister was quite keen on giving that as the probable reason as to why I've been feeling this way and why I'm bringing up that old promise. This is more along the lines of, I just can't imagine my life with anyone else. I, yes, have been on many dates and had one relationship that lasted over a year, but there was always this lack of feeling in me that, well, in all honesty, they weren't you. You're the guy that I knew instantly when we were young that I would want to be with forever. The guy who made me smile, the guy that I could wake up next to and was genuinely happy knowing that we were together. In my mind, you, Anthony, have been my only want and desire. That day we decided to try and move on because of the distance? I won't lie, it took me about a year to realize how stupid that was. It was mutual, but my feelings are that I pushed you towards it. I honestly feel like the first suggestion of giving time to each other to finish school and not have to try and coordinate our lives was the stupidest mistake I could have ever done. Anthony, you are my soulmate, my love, my life, and that is why what comes next I say with all fear aside. I am ready to leave everything and find a new job to move back to where you are and be with you. I'm fully prepared to do this if you even think there can be a chance of us again. I love you, I love you, and nobody else will ever take the place that you have in my heart. I talked to my parents and friends, they're in full support of this. Also, thank you so much for being there for my parents when they needed help moving and working on dad's bike and truck. I had no idea until a few days ago. I will be fully committed to being yours. I want to be a part of your life and want you to be in mine forever, growing old, seeing the world change the lives we live together as one, and most importantly, I just want us to be happy. I've wasted enough time holding back what I've wanted to say for the last few years. Anthony, I love you so much. I want to live my life with you. I'm prepared to leave it all for you. And lastly, my love, my childhood friend, my soulmate, I'm more than prepared to be your wife and be the mother to our children. If I don't hear back by the end of the month, I will have assumed that you moved on for the better and will do my best not to reach out again. If you decide otherwise, I have left my number and email. Love, insert nickname from childhood, Nicole. To be honest, I don't know if I should respond or what I should do. She left her number, the one that's been calling me, and her email. I'm conflicted a lot, really. I literally cried when I read the letter, and it brought back a lot of emotions that I didn't think were still there. Since Michelle, Nicole, and I all went to the same high school, they both know each other, and I'm honestly afraid that Michelle will tell me to go be with her without a second thought if I told her about Nicole reaching out, only just knowing how she is as a person. I've been debating it since getting the letter yesterday, and since I always see good advice here, I thought to ask the Reddit family. If this isn't the right subreddit, I can repost somewhere else and apologize if so. Edit. Lots of great advice. Tomorrow, Michelle and I are going on a hike, so I'm going to bring up what I want and need out of a relationship to be happy. We'll update tomorrow. In the comments, middle-aged Lothario says, You only have one life, and your current relationship isn't going anywhere, so take the shot. 
OP wants marriage and kids, and the current girlfriend who cheated on him doesn't. I agree he should take it. OP replies, A huge part of me wants to try. A part of me wants to tell my current girlfriend what's going on and see what she thinks. Another part says that I should go see her for a few days and just see what she's like now. Also tempted to ask her mom and sister what she's like first. Definitely don't go around her by talking to her mom and sister. I would call her and just feel things out. Do the right thing with your current girlfriend, but I don't think you need to consult her. OP says, Okay, I can see that being straightforward is best. I'll give her a call tomorrow and just keep it as a catch-up call and nothing else. Yeah man, I hope it works out with her. You should try to meet her before making any major life changes. Good luck. OP says, I talked to my current girlfriend first. We had a big talk that lasted the six hours that we were hiking about what we are both wanting in the future. She made it clear that kids and adoption are out of her plan and suggested that we should just be friends if that's what I truly want in the future. I told her that I would still be friends with her no matter what since all the things we do together and she laughed and said, no kids and I keep my best friend who loves to do the same things that I do? Cha-ching! It's all good. Rather we both be happy in the long run. Don't feel too bad or think this is a mistake. We then talked about the letter from my ex and she pretty much said that Nicole sounds crazy, but if it's something that I want to pursue because of the history that we had, then she has no ill feelings of me going that route. Also said that if it doesn't work out, then I can always go back to plan, no kids and freedom. Thanked me for bringing it up, then in her typical fashion joked about me going to be blue bold for a bit. Rest of the hike was pretty much us talking like we normally do, then debating lunch. When we got to the trailhead, I asked if she wanted any alone time or not. She said no, and that she eventually thought that this would happen as we got older. Asked me if we can still do the friend stuff until something else happens in our lives, and I told her yes, of course. She said no harm in that, and then that was that. We're at the mall for her girl's lunch, and I'm sitting here like a weirdo at the table typing this. Update. Good evening, Redditors. A while back in 2019, I posted here in relationship advice about an ex that reached out after a decade. Recently, I was messaged by a few different people asking for an update. Whether you three had been refreshing the page since then, or it just randomly showed up in your searches, I wanted to post up the conclusion of what happened, what is still happening, and the journey since the post was made. After Michelle and I ended our relationship, Kinda, nothing changed aside from living together in sex, Nicole and I started making plans for when she came out here for her grandma's birthday. Talking on the phone a lot, emails back and forth, we decided on waiting to video chat or send pics to one another since it wasn't too far off when she would be visiting, and we thought that it would be a good surprise. The initial hello was awkward as hell. When she got out of the terminal, I recognized her right off the bat and was amazed that she pretty much looked exactly the same as when I last remembered. I had seen pictures at her sisters and parents, but I was floored on how much she hadn't changed in the last 10 years. Getting into the car, we kind of just stared at one another for a minute, and then she started off with, Well, if you don't drive anywhere, people are going to start honking, smart guy. That started our week-long catching up journey. We first went to get some food and decided on pizza, and it was pretty easy going from that moment on. We shared stories on what life has been like, showed off scars, looked at each other's trips and vacations, shared each other's hobbies. She asked about our old group of friends and who's still around. That small first meeting changed everything in life for both of us. I won't go into specific or minor details on the following dates and days, but to say that that week went by in a heartbeat is an understatement. When it was time for grandma's birthday, it was like old times again. The family was easy to be around, we all joked and laughed and didn't have much of any problems throughout the week. Our music taste was the only problem. Lots of fighting over that radio dial. The goodbye felt… painful. Our week of vacation was over and it was time to get back to our lives half a country apart. Flash forward a few weeks and we decided that I go visit her this time around. Phone conversations were going great and airfare was cheap enough. Texted before I got on the plane and told her my arrival time, landed, and felt like I was ghosted. Not here to pick me up, wasn't answering the phone, didn't respond to any texts, Facebook said online 4 hours ago, I started to feel like maybe this was some joke on her behalf and was worried. 
About 45 minutes go by and I'm walking towards a hotel when the phone rings and I find out that she was so antsy about me coming that she spent the night awake and upon hearing that I was on the way, promptly passed out hard. By the time she got to me, I was a sweaty mess, but was apologetic all the way to her place and the following two days. We hung out the entire time pretty much doing what we couldn't do where I live. Days at the beach, swimming, me getting in a small amount of rock hounding while she looked for critters, and eating all the Cajun food that I could ever hope. In a nutshell, it went great, and other than doing the constant bald jokes as I'd shaved my head, it was all fun. Meeting her friends, her dog, hanging out and doing things that we each love was just tranquil in every way possible. When it came time to say goodbye, she asked if I had any vacation time left, and if I did, she could come back up for longer, and I of course said yes. Four months go by of back and forth traveling on weekends, always on the phone, and by that point, I feel like it's time. I ask her if she wants to move in with me. Immediately, she said yes, and we made our last vacation week into a road trip to bring her up to where I live. Our dogs got along, and she was able to transfer to a new department based pretty close to where we lived. It was a dream coming true, and it too went by so fast that honestly, it feels like it was yesterday. She actually asked me to marry her a few months later, and I of course said yes. She had glow-in-the-dark rocks set up to ask me in our yard when we went up to the deck to watch the stars. I feel like I'm going on a rant here. So much for not every detail, right? <laughs> Well, it's been close to a couple of years now since everything started. We have a beautiful daughter together, Ariana, adopted. We had issues. She wouldn't be able to give birth. Our dogs are jerks and doofuses. Michelle and Nicole have met, and we're all friends again. They actually hang out a lot together. She's moved on, and we still do a lot of our favorite hobbies together as a group or separately. With COVID and us being at home non-stop together, it's been just fine. Were things perfect? No, but nothing ever is. We had our issues in the beginning and still squabble over stupid things at times. To everyone, that was part of the initial journey. I hope you've enjoyed this follow-up. This was the best decision, and my only regret is that we didn't reconcile our relationship earlier. This has went by in a flash, and honestly, I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. Each day is refreshing, and a smile rarely leaves my face. I get to spend my life with not only my first love and childhood friend, but also with great friends and family that are always there for the both of us. Our next post is by user Pissworm, titled, I just caught my younger brother trying to record me naked. I don't know if he's done it before. So, a little background info. I'm 19 female, my younger brother is 12, I still live at home. I told my brother that I was going to take a shower because he always hogs the one bathroom with the shower. Well, I noticed he was in the bathroom for a few seconds with the door open, so I thought he was just grabbing deodorant or something. I told him to leave, walked inside, closed the door, and proceeded to look at my face in the mirror when I noticed his phone propped up against some things. He had angled it so that he would get a nice shot of me before and after showering. I didn't want him to notice that I noticed his phone recording, so I casually knocked it over and didn't turn it off. Hopefully he'll think it just fell over. I've accidentally walked in on him watching porn several times, and always pretended that I didn't notice when he quickly minimized the window. He's getting old enough now, and I recognize that that's a normal sort of thing for a boy his age. However, what I am not comfortable with is him peeping at me, and he's old enough to know that that is not okay to do something like that. I'm a bit afraid to confront him or my mother for several reasons. One, I am a very private person, so it would be very uncomfortable. I suppose that's not a very good reason, but it is one. Two, my brother is a very sensitive person. Once when I caught him swearing, he started crying hysterically. I don't really want to confront him, but I'm paranoid of him doing it again. So what should I do? Should I even do anything? Is this common? In the comments, Kate Soma says, I would suggest, ultimately, to tell him not to do that. He needs to be told that it isn't an appropriate thing to do, both secretly filming girls and secretly filming his sister. Two options in my mind, vaguely direct and bluntly direct. Vaguely direct? Mention his phone if you notice again. Hey, don't forget your phone. Shows that you're paying attention and that he can't get away with that. 
Maybe when conversations allow, bring up creep shots when he's within earshot. Make sure he can hear someone say that it's inappropriate and creepy. That plants a little seed in his head. At the very least, that this isn't something that people should do. Bluntly indirect, leave him a note. I noticed your phone in the bathroom recording. That was really creepy. Don't do it again. You could make it vague too, but sometimes a very direct note is the easiest way to get information across. Act normal around him though. Give him a chance to move past this. 12-year-olds are weird as hell sometimes, if my childhood was anything to go by. Also, I like what Beatskin said. Find him some sort of pamphlet or book on male sexuality and casually leave it for him somewhere. While mileage may vary, I was a very private and easily upset child, and my mother communicated sex ed through pamphlets with a little note saying, ask me if you have any questions. It worked surprisingly well. OP replies, my mom gave me a book when I was younger. I didn't like that she did it, honestly. It just made me uncomfortable, and I think it would be the same for him. They teach sex ed in school, though. Right now, I'm going to assume that it was an isolated incident. If it happens again, I will try one of your suggestions. Thanks. This could be a little phase or something, but it could also be the start of a problem or obsession that only gets worse. It's probably best that you respected his privacy and acted like you didn't see him doing anything before the bathroom incident, but he's really crossed a line that you can't just let it sit there if it happens again. Be really cautious. If you don't know where his phone is while you're about to be naked, ask him to call yours as if you lost it in the couch cushions or something. If he does this again, you have to say something though. It doesn't have to be long and direct. The more vague it is, the more he'll be paranoid and afraid to ever try it again. A simple, listen, I found your phone recording in my room and it's not okay. I respect your privacy, so you need to respect mine or something. He'll be horrified, yeah, but he's earned it. Also, if he's just a dumb kid with a cheap phone, he probably has no way of storing other videos besides on his phone. I'd check that when you get a chance. OP says, I don't like doing this, but I'm going to snoop on his phone and computer when I get the chance. Fortunately, I don't think he knows how to transfer files from his phone to his computer. Edit. Okay, the verdict is that I'm just going to be careful and assume this is a one-time incident. If it happens again, I will somehow confront him using one or more of your suggestions. Edit 2. Well shit, he did it again. His PC looked clean earlier, but now I'm super paranoid that I missed stuff. I decided to write a note for the camera telling him that it's not okay. We'll see what happens, but everything's going to be super weird from now on. And now, onto the update, titled, My younger brother has again been spying on me naked in the bathroom for months. What do I do? It kept happening, so I told my mum and she confronted him. I have no idea what she told him, but he seemed to stop. Well, whenever I'm in the bathroom, I hear the floor creaking outside. I've opened the door before and didn't see anyone, so I'd always assumed that it was just the house shifting. Well, today I opened the bathroom door after a shower and sitting on the bathroom floor, naked and redditing, to find my brother laying there with a camera pointed under the door. I didn't realize you're able to see under it. This means that he has been spying on me naked for months, instead of just a few times like the previous incident. Do I tell my mom again about this? Clearly it didn't do anything last time. I can't destroy his phone because my mom will just have to pay for that shit. Edit. Well, I told my mom again, but I guess we'll see how this develops. I can provide updates later if anything happens. A few suggestions I liked were disabling the camera on his phone and getting him into some sort of therapy. The latter may be difficult to come by due to money, but we'll see what happens. I'm also interested in restricting his fun activities, but I'm worried it'll just leave more time for him to plot about me. Let me know what you're thinking about this and anything. In the comments, is there no father figure to talk to him? I don't think it's acceptable your brother is doing this. I am not trained in this field, but I can't imagine it's healthy for your brother to be doing this. It would be a temporary solution, but try blocking the crevice below the door with a towel. Your brother may indeed need a psychologist as some comments from a year ago state. OP replies, His father is not a good role model anyway, nor do I ever see him having a conversation about sexual boundaries. Unfortunately, due to some life circumstances, my family is quite poor at the moment. A psychologist would be far too expensive. How is your brother around children his own age? 
A school psychologist wouldn't necessarily be a great alternative, but it's something. OP replies, Well, he doesn't seem to hang out with any friends, but he plays Minecraft with the same group of kids every day. You mean like a psychologist present at the school? On his school's webpage, I see a counselor and a psychologist listed in the staff directory. Would either of these be helpful? And how much do you think it'd cost? A school counselor should not cost anything at all. OP says, Really? Do you think that would be helpful? Thank you so much. Well, I think it wouldn't hurt. And OP says, Well, shit. Turns out my mum won't do that because it'll go on his school record. Looks like I'll just never have to be naked again. Alternative Scenes says, That kid is definitely out in the world taking upskirt shots now. I hate to be that Redditor, but at this point, it's a matter for the police. Once or twice as being a perverted hormonal little shit, regularly is dangerous. There is a huge overlap between peeping toms and men that take advantage of other women, as well as young men who commit sex crimes early and young men who murder. He needs help the mother isn't giving. I was getting into beat his ass territory, but I suppose that's not a great idea. No, that's an excellent idea. The only problem is that it doesn't address the urge to do it, it just makes him craftier so he doesn't get caught. If I caught someone recording me without my knowledge, I'd be pissed and probably do the same. Take his phone away. I don't know why OP thought about breaking the phone, but not having the mother yoink it out of his hands. Catching him peeping on you is a much more solvable issue rather than risking having your nudes all over the world. Am I the asshole for kicking out my pregnant teenage stepdaughter over my cat? I'm at the vet waiting room with my cat, so I'm gonna rush this and edit the grammar later. So I, 35 female, have been with my 45 male fiancé for three years now. He has two kids, a daughter, 22, who's a lovely girl, and another daughter, 19, who I'll call Kim for the sake of the post. Kim has always had a bad attitude to everyone, especially me, now, before anybody assumes, my fiancé had already divorced his ex two years before we even met, and his ex is a nice person who I get along with very well, so there is no hate from her end either. Kim is three months pregnant and living with us because we have more room for her and the baby. The baby daddy stays sometimes, but he has two jobs, along with studies, so it's mainly been me who takes care of her. So, the main issue today... Her boyfriend came over, so my fiancé suggested we let them have the house to themselves and then go for a walk. About two hours later, I came home and noticed my cat missing, who Kim hated and wanted me to get rid of. I asked her where he was, and Kim said that she ran out the door, which I knew was bullshit. Whiskey is an elderly cat who wouldn't even go out on the porch if I didn't bring him. So I checked the ring camera, and as expected, Kim threw Whiskey out and then ran him off. My fiancé tried saying Kim is pregnant, her hormones are all over the place, and pregnancy brain messes with women, and that he was going to bring up getting rid of whiskey for the baby's sake anyway. I was in tears until I looked over at Kim who had a smug, satisfied look on her face, and I freaking lost it. I got up in her face and screamed that she had one hour to find my cat, or all of her shit would be in the dumpster, and I was done being her slave. She said she wasn't looking for my stupid cat and back off as she was pregnant. My fiancé told me to calm down and we would look for the cat. I told him no, I would look for my cat and when I got back, his daughter better be gone. And if he has issues, he could go too because I was sick of dealing with his little bee of a daughter who everyone including her own parents and boyfriends avoids. I didn't wait for them to respond. I did hear her crying though. As you know, I found my cat, he was hiding somewhere in the bushes, and it took 20 long minutes to find him. When I arrived home, they were both in the living room, and my fiancé said that he wanted to talk, but first he said I owed Kim an apology. I told him to F himself, and she better start packing. She's at her boyfriend's family home as far as I know, and my fiancé is not talking to me. In the comments, Between Weeb and Otaku says, Not the asshole. As a cat owner, I salute you. I mean, yeah, you might lose the relationship over this, but from the sounds of it, if this doesn't do it, something else likely will. In all honesty, I'm not someone who likes pets. I've had them in the past, I've cared for them, 
always make sure they were safe, fed, got proper care and such, but I lack the ability to bond with them. And I support her kicking out the fiancé over this crap. I'm 100% in favour of the cat staying over the people in that house. I'm not into animals really, and I don't think that in some cases someone should choose a pet over a significant other, say the partner is severely allergic, something like that. However, I totally support this. It's not even so much about the cat, but about all the things that kind of behaviour shows. If she's willing to do all of that over or to a cat, and the fiancé was in on it, what other shitty and conniving ways will they act when it comes to other things? This entire situation says so much. And even if you're not an animal person, you shouldn't want any ill will to come to an animal. They were willing to hurt a cat, and also by proxy, OP, and it was all plotted. OP should be very cognizant of their own safety when the ex comes for his things, as well as for a period after. These people sound like they have no moral compass and could be dangerous. Emma Lindenham says, Even if the cat was a huge problem, how people treat the things important to you is indicative of how they feel about you. If my partner disrespected my pets, plants, or possessions, we'd be absolutely through because that is not their call to make and it denies my autonomy. As others are saying, it's not even about the cat. Although real talk, to act that way around another living creature that is helpless and dependent is so, so vile to me. Walk to the Brook says, Not the asshole. Stepdaughter attacked your defenseless cat and got what she deserved. I'm curious if you own the house. OP replies, It's mine. Kick them all out. You deserve better. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Pregnancy hormones do not cause you to be cruel to an elderly pet. That's just vicious entitlement and garden variety meanness. You don't owe her an apology. She should be begging for your forgiveness, and so should your ex, fiancé. But pregnancy hormones are a good excuse coming from the accountability-lacking father of an entitled spoiled brat. How can he ask the daughter to take responsibility for her actions? It's her mere biology betraying her angelic nature. Sarcasm. I hope OP does not forgive either of them, though. They don't deserve it. Honestly, yeah, I'm on board with that one. I don't think that the fiancé has acted rationally in this situation, although in regards to other situations, I feel like this is something that you can talk through, at least to establish whether or not this is a hill for the fiancé to die on or not, and if it is, I don't think that relationship is salvageable. Regardless, I completely agree with OP in this situation. Everything she has done is correct in my point of view. I don't know if you could have approached this situation any smoother than she did without causing an actual, like, physical altercation at some point. So yeah, my stance to cap this one out is that I don't think OP is the asshole. Nothing they've done here shows them to be an asshole, so not the asshole. Update. I didn't think I'd give one, at least not this soon. So my now ex fiancés oldest daughter reached out to me to ask my side, I'll call her Kate. She's an animal lover like myself. Her father asked to stay with her for a few nights because he said that I was having a breakdown over my cat, and he basically made it out to be that the cat escaped, and I went after poor Kim for not trying to catch him given her condition, pregnancy or something like that. Kate is a very smart girl. She can see bullshit from a mile away, and obviously she knows her own sister, so she called Kim to ask her side. Kim was more honest, basically her and dad had planned it, as some of you suggested, and the plan was for her baby daddy to take the cat out to a road and dump it, but he wouldn't do it because in Kim's words, he was a pussy. So they got into a fight about it, and Kim, thankfully being lazy, just kicked Whiskey out and ran him out of the yard. Kate told me that the way that Kim's talking about me and Whiskey, even if she doesn't move back in, she'd do something for revenge to Whiskey. So I've decided to listen to Kate, my friends, the vet, his assistant, and everyone here, and I called off the wedding, which is in a few weeks, and broke up with my ex fiance by text. I don't give an F if it's immature or cruel. I've told him that I'll box up his stuff for him and leave it for him to collect in a few days. Don't worry about whiskey. I told my ex to call me when he's coming over, so he'll be locked in a room that's safe, and I'm calling a 24-hour locksmith next. The begging and bullshit promises have already started, but my mind is made up. I'm done being an ATM slave for him and his spoiled bee of a daughter, Kim. 
Whiskey is fine, by the way, just a little shaken, but he's curled up in my lap, refusing to move.